Oh dear. Oh dear, episode four, <laughs> season three, take one. That, <laughs> that was all wrong again. <laughs> oh, actually, well, is it season three? It's definitely not episode three. four, though. Yeah, it is. This is the fifth episode of our new run. Anyways. January, February, March. Oh, yeah, shoot. Yeah. I forgot. We, yeah. That's, well, we're already rolling. Too late. Uh, hello and welcome to episode 37 of Oh Dear, presented by Bose Bar and Stage. Coming to you, as always, from Communal Creative Studios by Bose in the heart of downtown Red Deer. Uh, thank you, as always, for tuning in. I'm Ted. Emmett in what feels like a, a very empty studio once again. I mean, there, there's a lot of crap in here now, but a lot less of our crap as we are uh, down three people again, just four of us tonight. But like I said last episode, that's pretty much going to happen every time. Yeah, trimming the fat. We've yeah, we've been doing a great job of that this year in in every every way. <laughs> uh, well, you say trimming the fat, and this is the first name I have written down. But Dustin Walsh and Andrew couldn't be here tonight, uh, which means joining us at the table for the very first time after only a few episodes uh, going from a Kevin on this podcast to the yeah. Kevin on this podcast <laughs> for tonight. Uh, the athlete, Kevin Strybosh, uh, welcome to the bigs. Thank you. And uh, and welcome back since you weren't here last yeah, episode. Yeah, I did miss the last one. So Andrew got a turn at the table, so I felt left out and now here I am. But then you opened it up with saying there was a bunch of crap in here and I <laughs> thought that you were talking about me, so. <laughs> well, it I, doesn't matter. That brings uh, us to our next guest, yeah. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> yeah, here. <laughs> No, uh, before before we move on though, too, because I know between us recording and when this comes out is your birthday, correct? Mm-hmm. Like we're right now two days away. Two days away from correct. a birthday. Yes. Yeah, I remembered. So uh, happy birthday. <clears throat> That's from Dustin. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Dustin was very adamant that uh, we, we bring up your birthday. Okay. Now, also returning after missing last episode and uh, no one missed her more than Andrew who had to fill in on ad reads. Uh, coworker Aaron, welcome back. Thank you. Pleased to be back. Are you still gross? It's always. Okay. Uh, no, I'm pleased to, to see how this goes and um, no, I'm not pleased. I'm excited to yes. see how... <laughs> I'm excited to see how this goes, and maybe it's a case for some restructuring in the podcast. Yeah. Whoa. Wasn't a great start for you. No, but, uh, I know. I'll be pleased to see how it turns <laughs> out also. Uh, and, of course, the man who, as far as I know, maintains a perfect attendance record <laughs> with this podcast, uh, Ryan Lund. Way I, to keep the streak going. I ain't going anywhere, Teddy. You nerd. <laughs> You're not going to get rid of me that easy. <laughs> And how are things? Pretty good. I was sick for about half of March, but just got over it. So feeling good, feeling fresh, feeling ready to share my thoughts tonight. And plural. Yeah, yeah, more than one oh, tonight. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. I'm pleased to see that too. <laughs> we'll let that go eventually, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> At some point. Um, and with us here, uh, being very quiet because we brought him a pizza and boy, does he deserve it. We'll talk about that later. But uh, Riley from Communal Creative Studios supervising as always. So uh, Riley, thanks for being here. Uh, We'll, we'll try and be brief tonight. Yeah, give the guys, a, give the crew a wave, Riley. Yeah. <laughs> God, he's always stuffing his he's face. He's waving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so usually we have a, a local business sponsor the episode and then we'll have someone from that business come in for an interview, but doing things a little differently this time around. And our feature interview for this episode will be with two of the founding members of Wannabe, a Spice Girls tribute, which you, you may or may not have heard us talk about the last couple episodes, uh, ahead of their April 25th show at Bose, which is, of course, presented by Oh Dear. So that's coming up uh, in just a few minutes. But first, let's get this episode rolling the same way we always do with the Glad Game. The Glad Game is brought to you by Alberta Asian Motor Works and Alberta European Motor Works, family owned and operated in Red Deer for over 15 years, offering full service for all Asian and European makes and models. Learn more at aemw.com and aamwrd.com and follow them on social media. Suck it, Andrew. (laughs) I don't think he listens to this podcast. He will not. Um, so we have a little bit more to talk about with, with well, specifically Alberta Asian Motor Works in just a little bit. So uh, we'll, we'll put that off. Uh, for now, though, for the Glad Game, every morning, obviously, on our on our show, on the radio, we read the news. So uh, lot, lots of bad news out there. But I came across a great story that uh, helps restore faith in the youth of uh, at least central Alberta. Uh, big shout out to four students from Lacombe Upper Elementary School. Uh, they 
they, during their spring break, decided to be very charitable. Khalil Abaro, Gavin Barnwell, Will Gillette, and Leo Jackson, uh, they went out and delivered donations from their own fundraiser to four different Lacombe charities. Uh, one of those was A Better World, which is a uh, nonprofit that completes various humanitarian projects kind of all over the world. Um, from their share of the money raised for this too, it's going towards new desks for classrooms in Kenya. So I think it's pretty cool that he's a grade five students. How old is that? About 11 10, or 12? 10, 11. 10, 11. Yeah, that they decided on their own. They, they ran a raffle, did prizes, like uh, raised like almost 500 bucks and then decided to give away uh, to four different charities, which I think again, uh, it's things we don't talk about maybe enough because there's uh, so much crap going on, not just in this room, <laughs> Kevin, but all over. So uh, I, I don't know. I, I just love seeing uh, kids like just go out on their own unprompted and doing things like this. So uh, there's our future. Yeah, like good, good for them for taking their own time, their their own initiative, going out and finding causes they believe in and, and supporting those causes. So that's that's awesome. And I'm sure we'll hear, uh, hear more big things from them down the road too. Like, I don't know. I don't know about any of you three. Like when I was 11, I don't think I did anything for charity unless it was like through a sports team or whatever. And like it was forced. I never just thought, hey, let's do something for other people because I was kind of a selfish jerk. I think I was just trying to rip my friends off of like Pokemon cards and stuff like that, making trades. I wasn't worried about kids in Kenya or <laughs> getting, getting desks for people or raising money or anything like that. So yeah. kudos to those kids. Well, and even though you're like you're turning another year older soon, I think you're still trying to rip people off with Pokemon cards. And It's a great game, yeah. honestly. <laughs> you got Charizard? Not at the moment. <laughs> yeah, talk to me after. <laughs> Um, I've got a I've got a cool story I read this past week too. Uh, not quite as awesome as that one, but, but you want to let everyone know that you read. Yeah, that yeah. I can read and I continue to do so. So uh, I guess there was a, an annual survey that came out for the top cities for Uber passengers. Red Deer was the number one city in Canada for Uber passenger rating. And as someone who does take a lot of Ubers, I wanted to get a lot of credit <laughs> for that high rating. So if you if you've taken an Uber in Red Deer this past year and you were polite on time, uh, tipped well, and and weren't a dick weren't yeah. a dick then you were probably then you were part of the the solution so give yourself yeah. a pat on the back kept all your bodily fluids inside yeah. of you in the car <laughs> yeah. which I had a couple friends in town a couple weeks ago that almost didn't <laughs> so maybe they don't they're from calgary so maybe they don't yeah, they take, for the uber they probably didn't get a great they probably uber take rating. they probably take cabs yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, you know what? I actually had that written down to talk about too. So, uh, I thought that was just kind of a, is it a huge stat? No, but it's great to be number one at something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And only, only, that was the only Alberta city on the top 10 too. Hmm. Awesome. Good for us. Oh my God. Why did I write so much? <laughs> <laughs> because I'm trying to be talking. brief and then I did this. You need, yeah. to, you need to do bullet points, my friend. Oh no, no. Yeah. But then I forget stuff. It's not a PowerPoint. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. You can write it all out. All right, and with that, uh, time to head into our feature interview. And as I mentioned at the top of the show, a little bit of a change up for this one. Uh, by the time this episode comes out, we'll be less than two weeks away from the wannabe Spice Girls tribute show at Bo's Bar and Stage. Uh, Kevin just did a fist fist pump, and uh, very deservedly so. Uh, presented by Oh Dear, and again, it's no secret how excited we all are for this show, since it's the first time we've ever, as a podcast, got to present any kind of show at Bo's and because Bose is our presenting sponsor. Uh, we decided it only made sense to try and do an interview with the ladies from Wannabe. Uh, we reached out. We got an instant yes, uh, which is awesome. Uh, we appreciate how eager they were to come on the show and do an interview. And then after a bit of rescheduling due to me not realizing that 2 p.m. in Ontario is different than 2 p.m. <laughs> in Alberta. Uh, Lund co-worker Aaron and I had the opportunity to chat with sisters Barbara and Kat, the two founding members of Wannabe, with the initial intention of it just being kind of a bonus interview that we were going to put on YouTube and social media. But honestly, it was so good that uh, we knew it had to be featured in the podcast. But before we go into it, since Andrew isn't here today for his Andrew Russell Market Minute or just just the tips. Uh, we still want to give him his uh, once an episode shout out so that we can still charge him for it. So Aaron, uh, tell us who this interview is brought to us by. This interview is brought to you by Andrew Russell and Associates at Remax Real Estate, the trusted experts for all things real estate in central Alberta. Skip the sales pitch and get real advice from real people who offer real results. Visit their website at andrewrussell.ca. All right. And without further ado, here's the interview. 
All right. Well, welcome to a special Oh Dear interview. A Ted here with co-worker Aaron and Lund. And we have a two of the ladies, sisters actually, from Wannabe, a Spice Girls tribute, a Barbara and Kat, or yeah. Ginger Spice and Baby Spice. Baby uh, Spice. Thanks so much for taking the time to do this. Oh, Thank yeah. for having us. Thank you. We're very excited. I guess uh, first off, the easiest thing is to kind of uh, tell your story a little bit about how Wannabe got started. I know you've been around for a while now. Uh, what started the whole thing? So... 12 years ago, uh, <laughs> my sister and I and um, two of our friends had, we had all just kind of graduated or left acting school and music school and we were out of work, <laughs> frankly. And we were in that stage of like, well, good thing we did that and studied <laughs> Shakespeare and jazz <laughs> composition. And we had, uh, we had some friends actually who had started a Daft Punk tribute and they were jazz players and they were playing everything live and they had had some success with it. And mm -hmm. so I was uh, walking on the street with one of our oldest and best friends, Susie, who um, is the original Posh Spice. And we were like kind of griping about, I mean, we were <laughs> complimenting and also being like, oh man, that Daft Punk tribute thing is a good idea. Like what could we do? And one of us said something like, well, what if we did a Spice Girls thing? And we sort of laughed at that because we were very serious actors and musicians for a second. And then we paused and we're like, but what if we did do that? So we uh, enlisted Kat and a couple other friends and music, a bunch of musicians, a bunch of players. Mm -hmm. And we began. We, we rehearsed like every Saturday for like five months, I would say for yeah. a few hours mm -hmm. and then worked out all of like the singing, dancing, all of that. Mm -hmm. And we and booked then... the Elma Combo, which is like a yeah. kind of a legendary Toronto club where the actual Spice Girls played yeah. back when they were first coming. A lot out. of very famous people have played there. Oh yeah. Like the Stones have played yeah. there everywhere. And we just booked the space and we were, nobody knew who we were and we hadn't done a show yet we were working um yeah every weekend like kat said yeah. and uh, the band get like had full arrangements like musical arrangements and we yeah. were gonna sing and do it all live and yeah and then the toronto star which is our main paper here found out about us and wrote an article and basically from there we ended up yeah so we were the center so, <laughs> so we had crazy. no tickets sold yeah. early in the <laughs> week because no one knew who we were and we yeah. were like whatever we'll do this one and it was hard. like our friends and family so we we're like whatever a one-off it's gonna be super fun we'll whatever. sell like 60 tickets. We're like, we'll sell like 60 tickets and that will be awesome. This is fun. We're, we have nothing else to do. And the, the the star ran in this in the entertainment section as the center yeah. piece oh. about us. And we hadn't played one show yet. But yeah. That article it came out on the Saturday morning and we were playing the Saturday night. It was like in a movie, like the record store. There was a record store. We were selling hard copy. <laughs> yeah. We're they called us. We were walking like, down the street yeah. and I remember us just like screaming like that. Like we, we're sold we're out. Sold we brought out. back more hard tickets. Two hours yeah. later, we're sold out. We're sold out. Yeah. So when we finally got to the stage, it was a it was like January or something. It was freezing cold. And we're at the Elma Combo, we're hearing this like scream. Yeah. from out what and we're we're on? literally in the back like green room i would say and it's freezing we're in our oh park we're in our parkas and <laughs> parkas and platforms and we're just like kind of waiting for the show to start and the way that we actually started the show it was a garage that kind of lifted oh yeah, yeah. No and, way. and it ended up so it's like we were already like oh it's like pretty packed but we didn't yeah. really know what to expect and it starts to lift and we're kind of all in we're our like, spice Ugh. poses like frozen and like the crowd went <laughs> insane yeah. like it was like i have goosebumps to this day yeah. and to be honest i I didn't hear one like I couldn't hear myself singing the entire time. No. And like I actually was like I could have been lip singing because <laughs> everyone was screaming at us. Like yeah. it was wild. Like it was like sold out around yeah. the block. Like there's lineup around the block. Yeah. We hadn't done one show ever. We had yeah. never played. We, we're all like performers, but we never played to a crowd like this. And it just it felt like I yeah. Like I don't even crazy. remember. It was just like press go and go. Yeah, it felt and then surreal. That just, that's just how it started, and then it just hasn't stopped. And, and then it kept yeah just getting like bigger. Like we kept getting more and more shows. Then like manager agent tour manager like it just kind of yeah. kept going from there and we've been doing it for 12 years yeah so, it's 12 years so what was the capacity of that place for your first show 600 i don't know something like wow 600 to a yeah. thousand like it was yeah you guys are expecting 60 people and there's 10 times 20 <laughs> exactly. times that people <laughs> yeah, yeah it was so, pretty wild so for your yeah. first rehearsal when you guys got together was there any like big arguments over who was going to play which Spice Girl? No, no it, was it was honestly, they <laughs> fell in like so perfectly. Yeah, it was a lot of, especially at the beginning, us listening. We, we'd like to tackle like two songs a week. So we would sit in um, one of our like apartments and like listen to like Two Become One and then 
be like, okay, and everyone's got a pretty good ear. We'll be like, okay, I think the bottom harmony is sporty. So Annika do that. And like the melodies, let's keep Cat on the melody yeah. and keep Barb on the melody. We, and we just kind of went like that and we went piece by piece. But yeah. we were so, we were so excited to do it. And it was so egoless. And yeah. we, were, we had no ego attached because we expected nothing to come from it. We were yeah. just like, this is funny. Well, yeah. nostalgia sells, right? Obviously. And there's a market for it because there's all of the, the 80s and 70s tribute bands, but not a lot of 90s, especially. And do you oh, find too, like, are you surprised even after a decade that that same demand is still there for a band with especially yeah. i guess like two and a half albums basically yeah oh. exactly yeah but the spice girls were like magic though i don't know there's something yeah. about them they were like the, even like their message of girl power and like they were so ahead of their time and the five of them coming together i feel like everyone could like resonate with something like do you know what i mean with one of them it's like oh i'm a baby spice i'm that like they there was and they were so real they were so genuinely themselves in a way yeah. you know well you you start to like it's been interesting to be doing this for over a decade and even like our yeah. internal attitudes about them like i would say i like liked them but i definitely didn't understand why they were so important <laughs> and so powerful and being in this group and yeah. watching the way that people, the react people respond to us. Yeah. but also the deficit of this type of uh female role model in the pop culture yeah. doesn't exist and it hasn't happened again mm -hmm. because it was only in this time and the success to, of them seems to be that like they're just five regular, regular girls, girls. Yeah. who have big personalities who aren't doing it for men and who are fine with just being okay yeah and like <laughs> That is partly why it works because yeah. they're not the best singers. They're they're just having a blast, and people, especially people, underestimate the power of groups of women. Gen I'm generalizing greatly here, but like together, like there's yeah. nothing like it. There's a reason only you know if you're yeah. a woman, you know this. Yeah, and it's always like when like film execs are like, wait, that female driven comedy sold out. On <laughs> yes, weirdly, half yeah. the population. <laughs> wants to see themselves as we all want to see ourselves. Anyway, so that's partly what's made it um, continue. And yes, we certainly thought it was going to stop. Yeah. I thought it was going to, well, we thought it was going to stop after the first show. Yeah. <laughs> so how many, how many shows do you guys do per year, I guess now? Is it, has that, has that increased well, to decreased always, at all? It's always different. It's increased. Yeah, it's increased. It's increased. It started at the beginning. It would be like six for the first year. You know, we would do like kind of like, well, when we do Toronto, because we're, from Toronto, we would play like we kind of popped around the big venues, and then we did our first show out um, in where did we Edmonton mm -hmm. that first year, and then they then we started to play like the town surrounding Toronto, and then we kind of I think we went and out it just kept growing. Yeah, we went out like west, west. in 2017 or something. I think that's when yeah. we went into the prairies and went into. And then we started doing like tours where we'd like fly in somewhere and then honestly go all like we've done like we started in Winnipeg and then went all the way to like BC, you know, like oh. drove all throughout there and then back and through snowstorms like yeah. we honestly could write a book like, a <laughs> like it's actually pretty crazy it would be called parkas and platforms <laughs> wow, there you go oh, yeah yeah but well, we did like a in 2022 we did a north american tour and we were out for like on six a tour weeks bus. on a tour bus and we played, played like 35 cities like it was we didn't have like a day off basically. we didn't have a day off it was pretty we insane. almost died we were, several times we were up mountains yeah we almost it's crashed crazy. it's been pretty <laughs> wild we, 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 it was it was intense so yeah so like we kind of we usually do tours we go through like stints of like January, February, usually the slower months for us. And then once yeah. like summer comes, it's like rammed. And yeah. Spring into summer, into fall even. Christmas season stuff is busy. Yeah. And you've had some dates too, I've seen down in the States as well. Have you found a two, obviously you promote yourselves and try and book, but do you ever get ones that people reach out to you and you think like, oh my God, I never even expected that. Oh yeah. We played Whiskey A Go-Go in Hollywood in 2022. Wow. That was like, yeah, very that was cool. Really cool. And, and we played Palm Springs Pride in the same day yeah oh, in the morning oh. we played drove Palm pride and the night before we played santa cruz yeah santa we cruz drove night, overnight drove okay, overnight 13 hours santa cruz said uh, palm springs into palm springs yeah. so we literally we barely slept and then we did palm springs pride and then we had a three and a half hour four hour drive because there was so much traffic into la did our sound check did, and then whiskey yeah whiskey, whiskey. yeah like that was a great like that you know because that that's a legendary itself. venue so yeah, yeah the, the stuff in the states has been interesting we have different like representation in the states and we have a different agents yeah. in canada and so we're, but it's we're been nice lucky. to i feel like yeah. it's been nice to branch out because we've done canada so many times which obviously we love canada but it's really nice to get out into the states too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for them to find out about us so mm -hmm. that's been great would you guys ever consider going over to the the uk and and playing a show well, over there of course, that's like the dream, that's like, the dream. Is, oh. i want to get out there so bad yeah i mean the thing is there are obviously Spice Girls tribute acts in the UK and so if you know if a venue is going to book mm -hmm. yeah. an act like book someone local however 
we're really good. So they, <laughs> yeah. Best. <laughs> yeah. Well, and have yeah. you found, I guess, so, like this is going to be for the three of us, the third time that we've gone uh, to see you here in Red Deer. And I know, I think you've played at yeah. least one show before that. I know, obviously, like we are your target demographic, <laughs> especially the females around this age, right? Yeah. The late, late millennials. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, or early millennials, I guess we would be. But uh, have you found too that it, it's getting a little bit younger? And I've noticed every time I've been there, a lot yeah. like men are starting to catch on too. That hey, mm -hmm. not only is this fun, but the the ratio is pretty good. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's actually very smart. Yeah, brand. it's smart. If you're a single, I always say that to my guy man. friends. I'm like, come to one of my spice yeah. shows. Yeah, it's like it's better than Tinder, or Bumble. Yeah, do a wannabe <laughs> show and you'll meet your wife. Yeah, no, it's it's been interesting because when we started 12 years ago, everybody that saw us was in our 20s, and a lot of the women have had children and so now we'll play it when we do get to play all ages shows which yeah. are always special when we get to do that there's a whole generation of like kids like and they actually six. know the words like they know the full like dance yeah. moves and songs and they're like yeah five years old six years old it's wow. crazy we get a lot of really it's really cute to get a lot of family situations too yeah. we get people bring their moms and and we try to like we always throw in other songs into our set that are not spice girls like we throw in abba or we'll throw in you know <laughs> other things and once so, you know we'll throw dancing queen out and then the boomers are in and they're in for the rest of the show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I remember you guys but, did that last year and you were playing, yeah. you know, I don't know if it was ABBA or what band. Gimme, like, gimme, gimme. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, man, right. I, I didn't know the Spice Girls sang this song. <laughs> you, you completely had me fooled. So yeah. well done. Yeah. So, yeah they, Wannabe does slightly different things than Spice Girls. Yeah. Because we have to, there's only so much material that mm. we can play yeah. from the actual Spice Girls. But yeah, the demographic is, it's kind of everything and like, we have a huge LGBTQ community uh, like following, of yeah. course, and we really want to create an atmosphere where truly everybody is welcome and everybody yeah. feels that they can be free to be who they want to be. <laughs> That's our, one of our slogans. It is funny because the first show that we went to, I don't even know how we got tickets. And we were like, oh. Well, uh, we bought them. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> we saw it was coming and like, oh, let's go. That was it. Yeah. And I really didn't know what to expect. I think what you guys have really captured, at least for me, is like, I'm old. I don't go to clubs anymore. I don't know any songs. I have a baby at home. Yeah. But going out and like seeing you guys perform and the energy and the magic of that and then just like the songs that we used to go to the bar to like yeah. it was electric and then when you guys were coming back and I was like I don't know it's probably just like a post COVID like fever dream I don't know if it'll be that good again but we rounded up this time all of our friends friends from Calgary I had a house full of oh, girls cool. people in hotels and I was like you know, it was great last time. I don't know. I was kind of like trying not to oversell it. And it was the second time around was even better. The light up Aww, scrunchies. Yeah. I still have it in my car. <laughs> oh, the light up that was one of our best purchases. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So sold like incredibly. We couldn't believe it. it was kind of just like maybe we'll get this, and then it was like selling yeah, out every single pockets. time. We're like, whoa. Are yeah. they coming back this year? Oh, I don't. Are we bringing? Our I don't scrunchies? know what we have. Yeah, we'll probably bring scrunchies. Hopefully, we'll bring scrunchies. You'll sell <laughs> at least <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, yeah sell at least one. definitely one for her. <laughs> I think we all bought them. Oh yeah, yeah. everybody had. I them had on longer hair <laughs> then, yeah, so I wore one yeah. for a lot of them. Right? <laughs> but I have to imagine that it's not just a red deer special that the crowd is so in love with what you're doing. I have to imagine. Imagine that's everywhere yeah. you go. Yeah, it is definitely. It, and it's like you, what you said, like with, with your group of girlfriends mm -hmm. and like everyone coming together. It's it says a lot about our culture that you need. Like you have to give yourself permission to be able to go dance in a space with people. Yeah. And I have thoughts about that, but I'm <laughs> I am happy to be part of a group that can encourage that because yeah. I, why should there be an age restriction on such a thing? Like totally. that's so that still doesn't make any sense to me. And it's not like that in other countries. It's not no. like that in Europe. It's not like that in literally any culture other no. than, you know, Canada, it has a lot of wonderful qualities. And in some ways it can be quite conservative in terms of like what we allow ourselves to do, the age restrictions and, yeah. and women yeah. especially have, you know, like what you're saying, like I'm old, like obviously Obviously, you're not old, but like, <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to say that. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We just don't buy that because yeah. it's like, why? Like, you should dance. Dancing is an outlet. Coming together in community to, to music, nostalgia is so important. And, yeah. we, and we aim to try to like, we're bringing our full selves to it. We always do. We're having the yeah. best time. And yeah. we just it's want you to have the best, the best time. Like, it's well, and, and I one time, actually, this has happened a few times with 
um, there was one time um, a gay guy had come up to me and he was like, you know, I could never enjoy the Spice Girls properly when I was younger. Mm -hmm. He didn't couldn't go to the show like, you know, wasn't really going to be accepted for him. And he's like, I feel like I finally got to like the little boy in the room dancing to Spice Girls. He's like, I got to do that in public. And like that for me was like one of the most. And that's happened a few times yeah, like yeah. where people have said that. And that's like really moving to me that you can be comfortable with us. And it's so special. And I think especially after COVID where we were locked inside for so long, yeah. like now the shows feel even like they've always yeah. felt amazing. But people are so great. What Like especially coming out of COVID, yeah. like the show you're talking about, mm -hmm. all of those shows like were so incredible Cathartic. and special. And you could tell people were just so excited to be with one another, to be you know embracing each other and singing together and like not being scared of each other. Mm -hmm. And that for me has been really profound. Yeah. Well, and obviously I would guess the crowd is a big part of it and always helps. I'll never forget last time with Lund, uh, two become one. And somehow all, I think it was all five of you pointed at him. <laughs> And oh, it was, I bet you it was the coolest thing that. that ever happened yeah, was, to him. Yeah, I think that was me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I know what you're talking. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. guy who knows zero lyrics to zero songs. I I kind of yeah. just I I more so feel the music rather than than get the words right or, or know the titles. I just let it speak to me in my my own way. Um, I but like yeah. that. So for your guys' shows, like, how do you guys choose which which songs you're mm. going to perform? Do you do you always do the same ones? Do you switch it up pretty regularly? <laughs> we have to do some of the same like we always yeah, have the, to want to be the involved. iconic spice songs you obviously always have to stick mm -hmm. with for sure but mm -hmm. and like we, we started putting gimme gimme into the set when it went viral on tiktok because cat who's the most social media savvy of us all was like <laughs> i was like we have, we have to do gimme gimme and we're like so good. but we can't that doesn't make any sense but this is i think a bit of the secret sauce to why wannabes worked is because yes it's nostalgia but we're not blind to the trends like and we've done songs over the years that have been relevant that are maybe contemporary we did we did like a whole thing when the women's march happened and we did like a weird thing with like oh yeah nine nine. Day show. Like, it's not our prerogative to go too far in any direction in that way but we want to make it seem like we're not party clowns like we're not yeah. doing anything and doing an impression like and we always say this like when we have when we have shows and we we have an expanded cast now because yeah we have members of our group who have had kids and we need to bring people in and different yeah. people come in. So whenever whenever I like talk to a new girl and we're talking about this, we really want to emphasize that what we're doing in Wannabe is not trying to do impersonations. And it's more like the Spice Girls are superheroes. Yeah. And what is your version of Jan Ginger Spice? Or what is your version of Scary mm -hmm. or Posh? And it's not about like, what's your best Melanie C? Like, or what's your best Emma Bunton? It's like, what is the essence of the Spice superhero with the essence of you yeah. that you can bring together and that actually is what we're doing more than exact impersonations like yeah we really our personality is our chemistry and it seems like an impression but what's actually going on is i think that genuine connection well yeah and the reality is is like we like like obviously she's my sister our posh spice we grew up with since we were four like yeah. some of them are good friends so like it is like we're actually friends and yeah. we're actually sisters mm -hmm. so it's like the chemistry on stage isn't us acting it's like real it's like mm -hmm. we're all and yeah. and the people we've brought in have become really close because you it just mm -hmm. when you're touring when you're doing all these things spending so much time you get so close so yeah. it's actually all genuine friendships but to answer your question, because we definitely went on a, off on a tangent, <laughs> uh, we, we do always check in on what's how to like make the show special. And we've tried things like with the uh, U.S. question oh, about yeah. the show. So do you, you know uh, if you could read my mind, which it's that song. It was like mm. if you could read my mind mm. with the Gordon Lightfoot song. That was a big kind of one hit wonder disco song in the late nineties. Mm -hmm. It was a huge mm -hmm. hit in Canada yeah. because of CanCon. Oh, and, I gotta hear it every uh, every morning at work. Yes. <laughs> Stars on fifty four. Oh. That's right. Oh yeah. Well, well, when we did it in we the States eight. the first time, it was cricket. Did not, they yeah, they did it. It was just like, hmm. oh. so we never like, play that song in the States and we often play it here. Yeah. So like we, yeah. yeah. Anyway, we we'll always switch it up. Yeah, totally. So I noticed too, one thing in the last, or the two times you were here uh, that I'm a big song. I love the slow sing-along songs and you didn't do Goodbye. Like, is that because no. it's too sad or because Barbara you don't want to go with like stand in the corner while they sing it because yeah. you can't be a part <laughs> of it you know, they, they, might, they might bring it back like I, I've been actually thinking about I know we haven't, haven't done we it could in a while bring it back for this one. yeah maybe we'll bring it back for, we'll this bring show. It back for the show if we oh. sell out yeah. we'll All bring that right. right, there's a challenge there alright and I will sing along we'll to every word I promise yeah, yeah. 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 we well, love that yeah. beautiful. it is really beautiful yeah maybe we'll do it thanks for reminding me there you go we've done it well so when the mood comes down because it's a sad 
sad song. I guess everyone can blame me. Yeah. Just yeah. gotta make sure you follow it with an upbeat one. Yeah. Yeah. Random men. <laughs> yeah, they're my other favorite song. Oh. Perfect. Yeah. Helping us with the set list. Thank you. <laughs> so you guys yeah, mentioned yeah. bringing in like like other other members now. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about like now like in today's times, what what would be the name of a of a six spice girl? So obviously baby spice, scary spice, oh. ginger spice, sporty spice, posh spice. What would be the twenty twenty four version of a new a new spice oh my girl? God. Stressed spice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anxiety spice, yeah. <laughs> Oh my Anxiety god! Anxiety spice. Anxiety, yeah, no, uh, no. Confused. Spice. <laughs> um, my goodness, that's a very good question. I have not yet <laughs> thought about that, but I. Mm-mm. Well, I'm glad I'm the first one to ask you that yeah. question. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, you might be a reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There might be a reason. I, I guess the only actual spice in the Spice Girls is ginger spice, which is more of a root. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or an, right? it's like too ginger specific. root. I know it's too specific. I know. We're right. really <laughs> exposing their nicknames here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they are. You I just know. take anything and just, add spice. Just trying to, to it. dig yeah. deeper. I'm just trying to figure yeah. out who you guys are. So. <laughs> like maybe slay spice. Like that could it would have oh, to be yeah. sort of yeah, like maybe drag Gen related or Gen Z something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh yeah. No cap spice. I was just gonna yeah. I, okay. I was gonna say that and I didn't want to because I thought it would sound dumb and I'm glad I didn't say it. Yeah. I guess in the spirit of honesty too, we've been doing this for twelve years. The Spice Girls do have a, a limited repertoire. Have you found that it like sometimes too does get a little stale or like you said, you just have those little ways to to mix it up every time? I don't know, because I feel like people love the song so much. I mean, I think if you're talking about us, there's for sure ones I'm like, uh saw this one again. <laughs> like I'm I got annoyed, but Mostly, like it, they're so fu- it is so fun that I I never really am not bored. Like mm-hmm. it's more I think for some songs that we've done so many times that I could be like doing my taxes at the same time as I yeah. sing the third mm. chorus of Stop. Those are the times when I've made stupid mistakes because I'm like yeah yeah yeah, and then I'll, okay, like, I don't oh, I don't know how it goes. Like how does it go? So it's more like being <laughs> aware of not going too much into autopilot because some of it's like it's so second nature now. It's just like in yeah. our bodies and in our voices and it. But we sure. try with the set. List. That's why we try to pepper in newer material so that we don't get stale. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but yes, there are definitely songs that like, and even like it's individual for each girl, right? Like some some parts that I sing, I enjoy more than others. Some parts are more challenging for different singers. So you're like, ah, that high part in this, yeah. like, that harmony in this. So it's like little very specific things, I think. But generally, I mean, honestly, because the crowds are so into it, it makes our job extremely easy. Like we yeah. don't, you know, we don't have to sing usually. We've had had a couple disastrous shows where there's been nine people when it wasn't properly. Anyway, yeah. uh, <laughs> it doesn't work. The show doesn't not, work no, without a big crowd. It doesn't. And it's like exhausting. Yeah. If you have no energy from the crowd, you're just like, oh my God, this is the worst. But they're such good songs. Like the that, thing is, yeah. they're so catchy. Like they're really easy and like they're not easy. They're easy listening. Like they're like, they're pleasant. <laughs> yeah. So do you guys have your, your favorite songs? I think my favorite, <laughs> my favorite song is Say You'll Be oh, There. I was just going to say that. <laughs> because <laughs> it's such a good tempo. It's like a it's nice so good tempo and it's cool cool and the arrangement is good and it just the choreo is like usually happens after a big burst in the set and then yeah. kind of when things start to level out yeah so that's my favorite spice girl song and then my favorite non-spice girl songs that we often do is lady marmalade because that's when we get to go- yeah that's our like gonna be the song wannabe, i have the same answers want to be true okay so I, I do have the same answers but i would say so say you'll be there for me because i do i do honestly think it sounds the best like especially in all our voices i think we sound the best like our harmonies are amazing and also because i'm actually the biggest spice fan in our group that video for me when they're in the desert when that mm-hmm. came out i used to watch it like on repeat so i think the song in general i just get like so excited about and then lady marmalade for me non-spice because i get to rap in it and it's like my favorite moment <laughs> now in the red deer show if you need a guest rapper i know ryan lund has never done oh. it before but has always always no. dreamt of rapping no, the lady marmalade i have no experience <laughs> rapping i uh yeah i'll need a lot a lot of alcoholic uh yeah you gotta uh, learn it what's well, a bar yeah yeah <laughs> they, I, think, I think they serve yeah, alcohol at bows i'll check man that would be so fun but i just i would oh. i would hate yeah. to to ruin the entire show <laughs> i don't well, i mean you wouldn't ruin it would be terrible i don't think you'd ruin it I yeah. mean, it would be wonderfully you start terrible practicing now yeah, yeah that's true. You, know. you gotta start hey, learning anything's lyrics. possible yeah, yeah anything's possible i mean do you have two i guess uh, speaking about the crowd if 
there's probably so many. Do you have any uh, very memorable crowd moments or anything like that? Something that sticks out. Obviously, I've been to. The, I'm one of the weird guys at the show. It was like a 36 year old man who loves the Spice Girls and, and knows every word. I know last year at the Red Deer show, I think it was after when they're playing music. I know you come out sometimes too and dance. Yeah. And a guy took his shirt off during Backstreet Boys. Uh, oh, I yes, remember yes. that vividly. Yeah. Did you have anything like that happen? Like at other shows, that's very memorable. We've well, had high and low moments. We, we, <laughs> there's like no, a few. There's like, been some scary moments. <laughs> we played. It's one of the biggest crowds we played. We played World Pride in Toronto at Young and Dundas Square in 2017. That was, it was amazing. Like, it was like it was like that, the biggest was, crowd was, we've ever played for, it. and that was just like heaven. Like yeah. that was just amazing. There was the one at the Phoenix. Do you know what I'm going to say? Oh, oh, this is a crazy <laughs> Oh, she so, knows. <laughs> this is, but the Phoenix is like another pretty iconic venue in it's Toronto. We sold out. It was like, I think 2,500 people. It was like a really big deal. Oh. It was like, an, and it was an amazing show. Truly one amazing, uh, one of my favorite shows, I'd say. Separate. And um, there was like a, it was either a birthday party or a bachelorette party. And there was kind of an upper part. The balcony. Like the balcony. Yeah. And they were, it was like a VIP kind of situation. And apparently this girl, he'd. She open, swung her she leg she around. Swung her leg oh. Oh, no, <laughs> yeah. over and she actually got arrested, got arrested and, oh. and taken. Out. And they, so like that crazy like thing, and you're just like, it's like what? This is like a spite. <laughs> like, never would expect this like stuff happening. You're like what? So that that was like a really so, crazy experience. We played a couple. We played played a casino once, and it, where it was like for their people. Well, we played a lot of casinos, but there yeah. was one time where we were kind of in a smaller space, and it was definitely for a crowd of like older people who kind of come to the gamble all the time and sort of see the same type of crowd, and they want a two step. And this basically there's <laughs> oh, no way yeah. there. No, this was and as soon as we started wannabe, uh, like an older well, we turned around. We turned like, okay, we turned around. Contact. Yo, I'll tell you so what I want. And right away, this like older gentleman and his wife get up and start to like two, two step, step. Through, and just like one couple circling, and I just we started all laughing. Laughing. And it was so <laughs> it was really it, but sweet. It was like, but we it all it caught us like all of us, and then we like couldn't get through like, things. We just through couldn't because it was so funny, like two stepping to wannabe, and they like, weren't really watching. They had no, they, no. we could have literally been Black Sabbath. It could have been anybody. Yeah. Like they just wanted to two step together. You. They weren't on the beat, but they were having a great time. And I thought life is grand because this is such a strange experience. Yeah, it was and uh, yeah, and then people so from the slots watching us. Yeah, people from the slots were sort of <laughs> looking over. Like, us. Yeah, <laughs> we played El Paso once where it was like still smoking, and oh, people were yeah, just, just like chain smoking, smoking and, like, and, slots. Slots and kind of nobody close to the stage. Like yeah, we got fights break up, but mostly not too bad. Well, it's like a pretty like happy environment. But yeah, you never. Yeah, you, yeah, we've I've seen some, we've seen some like pushing with girls, but not so much now. Like early on there was yeah that. like, like now it's much more people are more chilled yeah a new thing that has happened to us a lot is people bringing their dolls like their spice dolls yeah oh. like they'll be like giving us our spice they'll dolls on the stage yeah. <laughs> like singing with our spice dolls i didn't know yeah, you, just do hold on. Yeah. you just hold on to them at, while you're performing they just, they just hold them hold them and then like, we, i have dolls and then we brought them on <laughs> sometimes like they're funny yeah like so do you, actually do you sign scary. the dolls at all no no because that would probably diminish their value yeah but we've had you know what who's the scariest audience members i say this is like love and whatever are sometimes little girls because they <laughs> yeah. they get these like looks in their eyes and and <laughs> little girl kids. like a high five and then the little kids are like you got high five and, and then, then they come up all... and they start to climb and it's scary <laughs> because we don't want to hurt them like we're like dancing and, like little fingers yeah and their moms and I was like we got some moms with them like kind of like well, give us their, their head. children yeah like, okay like, and I'm like holding the kid I'm like it's like oh, cute but it's so a little funny. it's a little precarious so yeah luckily Bose is 18 plus show so we don't yeah. have to we don't have to worry about that just the Ryan Lunds at the front of the stage. Yeah, I'll be, right? I'll be yeah. out there. I know exactly how I'm going to dance during Wannabe now. They'll see if I can make it break character. I'll just be two stepping away. I'll find someone yeah, to two that. step with. Yeah. So you have exactly. to learn how to two step and rap. The list is growing for this show. You have two yeah. tasks. You have to yeah. learn to rap and two step in, yeah. in the next got, month. Yeah, yeah I, got, I guess it's a month away. So that's, yeah, yeah, 30 days. So are you guys, do you guys play multiple shows that weekend or, or is Red Deer the only one? We're, yeah, we're on a yeah. little like mini tour through like, um, yeah, Alberta to BC. So, so yeah, six, six. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm picturing you guys touring around in that Spice Girl bus from the movie. Is that? <laughs> please tell me that's we what's have happening. Actually, had we have actually had a uh, yeah, we, tour bus before. We had one in 2022. It was an RV. It was like a giant RV. RV that we yeah, but it was and we actually watched Spice World on it. Yeah. Oh, um, nice. 
yeah. which felt really surreal. And it, it's crazy because it was kind of replic- like replicating our life, like all the challenges and hard times that they go through in the movie were kind of help- happening to us. So it was yeah. kind of crazy. Yeah, but, 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 on a but now we'll have a minivan. Yeah, we'll just try, like we'll fly in and then we'll drive through. Yeah, mm-hmm. through. Fly in, which is actually a lot easier than the bus. A big bus is not. Uh, no. So, so and it's big. actually also my birthday on the Red Deer. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> it might be I'm Lung's excited. birthday too. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has okay. a lot of birthdays. Every yeah. time, every time Ted hosts an MC or MCs an event, he pretends it's my birthday. He gets the entire oh. crowd is saying happy birthday to me, and then he makes That's me funny. finish my beer. So last year, I think I had like seventeen birthdays. And, oh by, and by the end, other people were like getting wise to it and getting mad at me for pretending it was my birthday, even though I had nothing to do with it. My fault. Yeah. So That's so it's so not funny. my birthday on on your birthday. I just oh, want to clear that up now. All right. But I hope well, you have a very happy birthday. Thank you. Yeah. So I was going to ask too, though, with like, do you, how many times have you watched the Spice World movie? Obviously, they're not a ton, like, because that's kind of research, right? I know we at least tried to watch it before the last show, and it it is a trip. Oh, my goodness. It is. That's a crazy movie it's yeah. like it's so fun it's so good it's <laughs> so fun yeah. i've watched it when i was younger like i used to watch it a lot yeah. when i was when we were growing up and then we definitely watched it probably when, when we, we were starting because we would watch a lot of footage of their old shows for research and stuff like that and then on the bus we would have been it. the yeah. last time that i watched it yeah when we were all together and it was kind of epic to yeah. watch it was like we were driving through the desert and watching it yeah. and it was like yeah. pretty surreal has this become your guys's full-time job by this point or is there other creative endeavors yeah. i would say at some points yeah because there's no time like when we were gone for almost like two months like mm-hmm. i think we came back we were gone for six and a half weeks whatever had like a few days off we were out again so it's it just depends sometimes mm-hmm. there's a lot and you don't have time for anything else but then obviously everyone has like other jobs as well but most of us are working but everyone's as in the performing arts so it's kind of like yeah it's one of the gigs like yeah. you know like some of us are actors or dancers and we all Creative. are creatives or like writers and so the thing about wannabe that's interesting is that it's very great grassroots like like i'm a co-owner of the band and i am run it with another another one of the members of the band and then all of the internal work all the social media cat does like so we have agents but we're doing everything yeah mm-hmm. we, like, we're like doing, gosh, dude, we didn't have representation for yeah. the first seven years we did it completely by ourselves we were wow. self so and we're, we're we're all kind of showbiz kids like we kind of grew up in the business so like we're yeah. kind of used to just doing everything like mm-hmm. we're we kind of just make it work so it is you know we definitely all put more time into it than what we get paid yeah. to do for it Certainly. Certainly. the labor of love as well and, and that's why it's, so, it's yeah it's like it's like a dream job so it's dream job. sometimes it's like oh my gosh there's so much it never stops and then there's so much work but it's so worth it yeah yeah so do you guys still get nervous right before a show or is it is that kind of gone away with the more you've done um, it no i'm more just some like and this has not really happened a lot recently but back i'd say in the day when there wasn't a lot of people mm-hmm. i just more i'm like i just know what kind of show it's going to be i'm like so yeah if, if i only get nervous <laughs> if there's an issue with like sound like oh yeah the sound, sound isn't good or mm-hmm. like yeah, the venue where, where this rarely happens we've been so fortunate to play amazing places with mostly really great you know bar owners and staff and sound people but you know sometimes we played a show like years ago where they didn't even have monitors for us and oh. we, we went on and it was just feedback and i had to like <laughs> leave this i was like i can't do this like there's no and we weren't set up well so oh, i think man. my pet, the worst thing as any performer or musician is if you sound like crap the audience isn't going to know that it's, it's not your system. fault yeah yeah. that it's right. a, a monitor it's just you suck and this isn't to put down sound people because it's like there's i have no more i have more respect for nobody more than a sound person like it's yeah, such a hard, it's hard job, job to be and tech. they're coming in and we're like we have you know an hour with them yeah it like it's, it's not hard. ideal but this is to say that like i only feel nervous when i know we're gonna not show yeah. our best mm-hmm. and there's nothing we can do about it and that that's that's like dread and then you're like, like yeah but not is, nerves like I'm not nerves no not nerves. well at least you don't have to be nervous at bow we'll pump their tires because you know bows well, they have uh Bose incredible sound people best, yeah, yeah. Bose is one oh. of the best places ever that the first show we played there i remember i just being like oh my god oh, yeah, and the, the staff is amazing like the audio everyone is incredible so and the sound and the lighting like the sound, separate sound yeah. and lighting like support they've really done a good job with the sound like sure. one thing that i could say from all these years of playing bars and venues is like it is, i guess this is obvious but you can tell what type of show you will be as soon as you walk in yeah. to the space like you know because you know how the space is run and if it's well managed and yeah. if the sta- how the staff treat you which means that's how they're being treated by their bosses exactly. and bows immediately felt like 
it felt very like us it like it like just home. it just yeah. we just jived and we felt completely taken care of and there was nothing we couldn't ask for and there was so much respect yeah for the performer and the artist and like well that, even yeah the sound system alone you yeah. can tell that they care about yeah so that's so really, their job just so, so much easy. better so easy so so besides besides bows do you guys have a, a favorite venue that you played at over the last last decade or so um we played <laughs> we played this place called the waiting room in omaha oh yeah that omaha. was so amazing and it was like oh my omaha, God, it was but so... it was this place called the waiting room we loved that we loved playing the phoenix in toronto we love playing the opera house in toronto the mod club we used to mod do club. a lot in toronto and and it's a close it closed in COVID, i think and it was right before covid, right before COVID but it was like it, it was like a very very special venue and, and the guy who was running it was pretty like we had a really nice relationship mm-hmm. with um, we played at that hotel in N- nelson bc yeah what's that place called oh my god we stay in the hotel and we stay oh, i can't remember it's in nelson though and it's a really it's a really cool like, venue. it's like in the hotel. basement yeah that place is amazing and the staff is amazing looms hotel or something yeah that was really you know cool yeah mm-hmm. we there are certain but bo's actually like is one of our favorites is actually sure. one of our favorites that we talk about a lot. yeah well, good job, Brennan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, really quick, just because I see Lund wrote down some Spice Girls songs, I think just in case he uh, wanted to show off. I think, uh, and not to put you on the spot, but uh, obviously you have the songs there, Lund. But if you want to throw out a couple of, of lyrics from even their most popular songs, I want to see if Lundy can guess them or not. Oh. Okay. If okay. Even, okay. Yeah. All right. Um, how about this? Um, don't you know it's going too fast? Racing so hard, you know it won't last. <laughs> Uh, stop. <laughs> yeah. I was say, should he take his notebook yeah. away though, so he doesn't know the title? Yeah. yeah. No, I wrote down like the five, the five, <laughs> the most five big songs. popular ones that I know. So um, last time that we had this conversation, I decided we should be friends. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Let's be friends. I don't know. <laughs> Say you'll be there. Yeah. Uh, you'll be there. I didn't yeah. have that one. Yeah. Uh, oh, I did yeah, have that right there. Yeah, you yeah. just didn't feel like it fit. <laughs> Let's see. How about flamenco, lombada, but hip hop is hunter. <laughs> oh my god. Um, I don't see it on your list. Yeah, actually. no. This must think... be. A, this must be a deep cut. Oh, it's it's spice up your life. Really? Not, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll learn that one too by the time the show comes. <laughs> I've got three things to to work on then. Um, I did have a few other questions uh, written down. Um, oh, is the end? Is this when he does the? Yeah, yeah this is fun. when he does all the, the extra questions. questions at the end. Do you yeah. guys think yeah. that a, a boy band called the Spice Boys would ever work? Mm. I mean, who's to say? Maybe like, uh, like, are they do? What kind of material are they doing? Uh, well, they're doing like they're just doing like boy band material. Like, like, like. Obviously, right now, I don't think we really have any any big boy bands, or I don't. know, Maybe I don't know, but uh, I yeah. feel like the the girl bands and boy bands are kind of maybe a thing yeah. of the past. Um, and do you think that, I mean, forget the Spice Boys, do you think that there will ever be another girl band, maybe not as good as the Spice Girls, but somebody that that attempts to do what the Spice Girls did? Because I think we're well, ready for it. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I the thing is like, if you go back all the way to like the 50s with like the girl groups then and then into like the ten, uh, the, the Supremes and then into yeah. like it goes through phases right like it goes through groups it depends on like the culture it depends on the style of music yeah. at the time so it goes group and then solo and then group and then solo so like I'm sure there'll be another it can't be the same as wannabe because we don't live at a time where the media is that way you know we don't live at a time where everyone's going to buy CDs like yeah it's, it, we live in the the age we live in where there's so many stream you know so I, I mean other than Taylor Swift you know she's kind of, I guess the closest to the Spice yeah Girls, yeah I say Taylor Swift except she's a soloist solo yeah. artist that's not to say that it yeah I think it, it things it, it's the it's, yeah everything goes in a circle there'll be something else and it will be representative of the culture uh, yeah that's relevant now that's a good answer um, okay <laughs> okay how's this how's this for a question what oh, about nice. well, are you guys worried about like uh, AI kind of taking over and and just anyone coming up with new songs and and they can create nowadays they they can create videos and songs they can create the lyrics and the melodies so that yeah. like isn't it like harmful for artists that AI could could create something that that a lot of people do like yeah, yeah it's harmful for all artists it's really harmful for writers it's really all like I've you know I'm a writer and I have a lot of friends who are writers and composers yeah. and it's in the immediate future of all this it's the most dire for them and us because you, if you don't have writers to pay or you don't have like you know friends to score films and you can just remash well you know it's yeah the, mm-hmm. the one thing though that if anything saves all this is live performance it's the yeah. only thing right. that AI are a live are a live band, band. Yeah. and so um, there's a lot I mean there's always a lot to worry about and I, I there's only so much energy I can like what are we supposed to do like it's, yeah. it, it's gonna happen and it's and it's not a good thing but <laughs> but we'll just 
Keep we'll just keep going going live and people i what i hope will happen is that the need for you know as we become more reliant on devices and our technology there is like a movement i feel like or like there is a yearning for real human connection yeah, yeah. and that's why nostalgia is so popular because people don't actually want to be disconnected no. people want to be together so and we saw that back to the point about like post pandemic yeah. shows is yeah. that actually people don't just want to be you know Inside, fighting on an yeah. instagram comments like people want to be in with human connection yeah. and you can't get that with ai you can't get a live experience with AI. I mean, maybe you can and we will, but at this point, no. That's what I feel like not that we up. have going for us. And that's what I hope for, I don't know, all of us as we navigate this weirdness. Another great answer. Yeah. <laughs> and my and my I, 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 my final question, <laughs> um, what, what can you tell people that haven't been to a show before? Like, what can people expect that are wanting to come to your show and ride here at Bose on uh, on April 25th this year? Um, like, how would you how would you guys best describe what you guys do? And can you guys give us a little sneak peek or a little tease as to, to what the show is going to be like? Our shows, we always say it's like, it's the party of the century. Like, it's just, you're going to have the best time. Mm -hmm. It's so much fun. It's an excuse to get dressed up. It's an excuse to be silly. It's an excuse to not take yourself seriously. It's an excuse to drink if you want. An excuse to let loose. Yeah, let loose. (laughs) To let loose. And you can cry. You can can cry. Oh, I have. Yeah. Well, he will cry. He will dance. <laughs> We're gonna do songs from the Spice Girls. We're also gonna do songs. We're doing Where Is Ever Drink Lady Marmalade. We'll do some other yeah. songs from other '90s queens and yeah. other big acts. It's like a varied uh, set. It's two, yeah. we'll do two sets. Uh, we'll do costume changes. We have like the accents. We have little sort of scenes in between. It's kind of like a weird combination between like a concert, kind of like an improv comedy show. Yeah, it's kind of like a drag show, except we sing yeah. live. Uh, but we're, <laughs> but it's it's kind of like an experience that you can only get with Wannabe, and it's yeah. a guaranteed entertaining time. Even if you don't like the Spice Girls, you'll find something you like. Even if you don't even like the show, you can laugh at it. So whatever yeah. you want, we've got you covered. It's a, and it's just a positive like vibe it's just a good vibe it's good vibes like it's good all, vibes all around you can't go and be like that was terrible or you no know. you can't it's not terrible it's so good and we're and we're so much fun and we want you to have fun and we really encourage people to dress up yeah and to dance and sing with us like go for it go all out yeah. like you were 11 years old in your bedroom with your hairbrush like, <laughs> like that that type of spirit is what we're endeavoring to offer to the people of Red Deer. Hell of an answer. <laughs> yeah, Riley, that's... Riley, go ahead and clip that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We'll set a good example. So um, I'll tell you what, we yes. bring it, we're up to about, I don't know, 15 guys in their late thirties that come, which is nice too, because uh, you uh-huh. find that too, you get like kind of the, the cool guys, right? Where they're like, oh, I'm not going that. to a Spice Girls show. We brought yeah. a couple last time and they can't wait to go back. Yeah, that's the yeah. thing is honestly, a lot of guys who come to our show, dudes are my are, favorite. They get so excited after and they're like, I'm coming again. Mm-hmm. Like, I love that. I'm like, yeah. And Aaron's flying back from Vancouver early just to go to the show, too. Not, <laughs> not to add any pressure. Yay. but uh, Aww, yay. Yeah. Yeah. Worst case, you. you can catch the Spice Boys show like, next week at a school <laughs> yeah. gymnasium yeah. here. Just be Lund <laughs> rapping Lady Marmalade. But, yeah, I'm looking yeah. to start a new <laughs> career, too. So that's why I asked the Spice Boys yeah. question. But uh, Or you can uh, open a food truck. Yeah, yeah either way. would work, too. <laughs> singing food truck. Singing oh, the- Wow. Okay. I just have to learn how to sing and learn how to cook and then I'm there. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll let you two go again. And like I, said, I did warn you though, there'd be a lot of Lund questions at the end, but uh, <laughs> thank you so much for doing this or, or ginger and baby spice. Uh, this yeah. was really cool for us to, to get to do it. Like I said, these shows do hold a special place in our hearts. Uh, a lot of fun memories, all of us together. So we can't wait uh, to not only be there, but to be the presenters of it, which is, uh, I guess, the last okay. question. Have you ever had a local podcast be the promoter of this your is show first. Yeah. This is our first. Right. we're really excited yeah we'll see how it could be could be the, the last two but hopefully not i think uh, <laughs> i don't I, think so. i'm hoping i think if yeah if it's good enough for ryan lund i think it's good enough <laughs> yeah. for, for everyone else so oh, uh, we're gonna have a blast yeah we're gonna have a great time so again thank you so much for doing this so we can't wait oh, for the it. show and for everyone still uh, not very many tickets left so april 25th yes. at bow's bar and stage uh, doors at six uh i haven't confirmed this with brennan but if we say it here we're gonna have to do it going to show hopefully spice world before then the music starts then wannabe starts so it's going to be a great night uh get your tickets and again thank you so much for doing this thank Thank you so much very nice to meet you ladies we'll come out and chat about the interview a little bit i thought it was pretty good i I asked some good hard-hitting questions and i forgot a couple but oh shoot (laughs) 
I really, I would love to see you do a monologue sometime. <laughs> yeah. Just step in front of the camera and just say what's on your mind. I've had, yeah, sometimes like when it hits you, it hits you hard and you just can spout yeah. off about something. So uh, maybe that's another series we'll talk about later. Yeah. I was going to say mono Lund, but that just makes you sound ill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it does. Anyways, hey, we're back from the interview. Thank you again to Barbara and Kat. A really good interview there with, uh, yeah, something we're very excited about, obviously. So we did the interview with, like last week. I think I mentioned enough times, April 25th at Bose Bar and Stage. Make sure you're there. But Kevin, you weren't there for this one, but uh, for Aaron and Lund, like it was very, I found it just interesting to how, how things uh, got started for them. But then you realize too, like the passion that has to go into something like this for it to really work. No, it's a great story. And they were so lovely and gracious with their time and such a fun, interesting, compelling story. And I also having a lot of friends who are creatives and kind of in the advertising industry and trying to make it, it's hard to truly follow your your creative endeavors and turn it into a career, especially. So I think that's so wonderful. And I didn't have a lot of questions for them because because they, they told their story so well, but I just like wanted to fangirl the whole time and be like, you guys are so great. You're so pretty and you're so nice. And like, you seem really fun and cool. And Lund had the questions covered. Yeah, he he always does. That's he did. What, but, uh, and again, for you too, Lund, this is something that we go back to the first show. Actually, the four of us here were the original four that went to that Spice Girls mm-hmm. show back in, I think it was like late 2019. But from that too, and, and getting to hear the story, does it also kind of change your perspective going in? Or are you just gonna do what you do, drink beer and dance well i'm still gonna do that but uh and yeah you have to rap now yeah good luck <laughs> uh, um yeah no it, it, it did change my perspective a little bit i i don't know what i was expecting or maybe i do i i think i was expecting them to be a little bit i was expecting them to be divas like the spice girls probably are yeah. like yeah. like famous artists actually are and they're really down to earth really easy to talk to really really excited about coming coming mm-hmm. and performing in ride your at bows again so just really really likable people and they've been doing it for 12 years now which was is amazing and it's pretty cool to hear how they got started and they weren't sure uh what to expect when they got started and, and they, right off the bat they were a big big hit and i think they've just grown ever since so uh kudos to them and i'm, I'm really looking forward to the show and in, in what three weeks or i guess when yeah. this comes out like 10, 10 days, days yeah. yeah ish yeah and i think too the, their story resonated with me it was on a different scale but for them hey we're gonna try this one time we have no idea how it's gonna go unexpected response to it and then it's kind of turned into a whole thing which honestly is the story of this podcast too. So I think it's again a pretty cool example of like just go and shoot your shot. Obviously they're doing this basically full time and the podcast is uh, part time. We're like, part time. We're part time <laughs> at best kind of a, a hobby but either way and I think the biggest thing I got from them too in hearing it is their goal. They're out there too obviously they want to perform. That's kind of their thing but they create memories for so many people and for us right like I as a group of friends I can't think of a, a bigger core memory probably than going to that Spice Girl Night. Mm-hmm. So if you ha- don't have your tickets yet, you're missing out on a core memory. I think if you've ever watched the Spice Girls when you're younger, or even if you've watched them recently, like obviously they're not performing recently, or if you like their music at all, mm. then you're going to love the show because it is a high energy show. They sing a lot of Spice Girls tunes with some other tunes mixed in, which is which is pretty cool. Like Lady Marmalade yeah, <laughs> featuring Ryan Lund. Uh, uh, nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's like, a, I don't know how long they perform for. It's probably an hour, hour and a half, mm. maybe. Like everyone's singing along, everyone's dancing. Um, I think I think they're bringing back the uh, light up scrunchies, light up scrunchies oh, yeah. so that place is going to be lit up like a Christmas tree. Well, we requested them. Yeah, so hopefully they deliver. Like it's probably sold out now. I don't know, Ted, do we have any more tickets to give away? We do, yeah. I'm guessing by the time this comes out, we'll be right in the middle of a giveaway with actually the, with a bonus thrown in because uh, we're partnering with the gutter to do a giveaway of four more tickets and bowling and dinner before. Mm-hmm. And then Ryan Lund is going to drive you from the bowling alley to bowls. That's only if you bowl a perfect game yeah. though. So. <laughs> yeah, that last part was made up, but we'll work on them. But yeah, stay check out social media. There will be another giveaway going on. And yeah, bowsbar.com to get your tickets if there are any left. Even if you're not a big Spice Girls fan, if you like fun, come out to that one. Mm-hmm. Or if you just like uh, alcohol or food or dancing, if you just like life, Come on out. Yeah. Be like scrunchies. Oh. Or friendship. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those no are all important <laughs> things that we named there. All right. So again, thank you to a wannabe a Spice Girls tribute for uh, doing that interview. Again, uh, was pretty cool. And I guess because we're already kind of doing it, we may as well move in to shooting the breeze. <laughs> 
Wow. Slept on with a shotgun today. Yeah, there was like you can't you couldn't see it, but there was arm movement. Like there was there was effort that went into that. Oh yeah, I think I think I had I think well ahead for these <laughs> these bits. I got scared for a second there. Yeah, you probably thought it was a real gun. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get used to it at the big tub, at the big table, Kev. Did you say the tub? <laughs> big tub. <laughs> That's for after big the tub show. Is after. Yeah. I'll see you there later. Yeah. yeah. Shooting the breeze is bought. No, oh, damn it! Bought. I almost well, was perfect. Kind of is bought. For not fuck's bought. sake, Darren. <laughs> this is <laughs> that was two for two. Where's Andrew? Yeah. <laughs> Andrew, come back. He couldn't have been better than me. No, he was not. Shooting the Breeze is brought to you by Red Stag Barbershop, an authentic experience with a modern twist. Your locally owned grooming spot with locations in Capstone, Gasoline Alley, and Sylvan Lake. It's where friends gather for top-notch haircuts and traditional hot shaves, all while enjoying a cold craft beer or cocktail. With their easy online booking, they make sure your time with them is not just about looking great, but feeling at home. Red Stag Barbershop, where every visit feels like catching up with old friends. Well, and I'll start off talking about Red Stag again because today I, I did what I think is going to now be a recording day tradition as I went in for a, a hot shave and a beard trim. Uh, just a nice little way to treat yourself and kick back for a half hour and my beard looks better than it would have if I tried to trim it myself. So thank treat. you, Danny at Red Stag. What? You? Do it, do it. Treat yourself. <laughs> I can't, I can't get the snapping right though. Yeah. That's, Treat yourself. Treat yourself. <laughs> that's tough. That was way We're off. Like, you keep tough. going until you're happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> Treat yourself. You, you started thinking too much. Treat yourself. Damn it, Ted. Treat yourself. <laughs> uh, that's how okay, it's that that it. Yeah. All right. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, speaking of Red Stag, again, the, the four of us were, were there for this. We're just keeping this podcast together. But first barbershop talk, again, was on the last episode with Steven. Went great. Uh, very excited to announce that coming uh, very soon. You'll see we haven't recorded it yet. Our next guest on barbershop talk is going to be the mayor of Penhold, Mike nice. Yarjo, who if you've ever met him, a uh, really cool guy. I, I think he will be great. So uh, stay tuned for that. All right, and uh, moving on, more things to talk about. Again, uh, the Chamber Business Spotlight, uh, that is out. I have to give uh, Riley and Fish at Communal Creative Studios a whole lot of praise here because the, the Red Deer Chamber of Commerce Business Spotlight came out uh, featuring Johnson Spring and Trailer. was very well received, very well done to uh, by Riley and Fish. And now uh, the next one coming up we're going to feature is the Forum, which is, uh, what, I guess, by Ariel, like Ariels, I guess they do. They perform, do lessons and all all of that or i'm hoping that we can get away without doing a lesson but we'll see so uh that's something else to look for in the future and uh actually before we go on to this uh thank you to the chamber too for having dustin lund walsh and i out to mc and kind of host and it'll be the entertainment kind of sort of for their 130th birthday celebration uh was pretty cool they did a surprise reveal of their new branding as well which is orange which is i know aaron you do all our graphic design so it's pretty excellent I did think it was a nice tie-in. Well, and Len, it was uh, kind of, you've done the live thing. Now, Dustin and Walsh were new. We did some live interviews with different members and stuff. But uh, again, a, a great event there. And another way to, you had people legitimately asking too what, what you do for work. So you, you drummed up some prospects too while you were there. Yeah, I think I got a few uh, interviews lined up, either real or fictional, we'll find <laughs> yeah. out. Um, but uh, yeah, it was exciting. There was, I don't know, 100, 120 people there at least. And it was really cool to, to see the unveiling of the new logo. Uh, really cool to, to hear about uh, some of the, the local businesses that have been chamber members for over 50 years and to ask them about their stories. And it was just a just an overall fun night, just a, a really relaxing night, even though we, we did have to host a little bit. It really wasn't very much pressure no. at all. And it was really, really fun. A really good Monday night out. Uh, if you have a relaxing night where you need some hosts, uh, we're, we're your guys because that was uh, that was a lot of fun and uh, you know obviously uh, we're working a lot with the chamber lately and I would say everything we've done and everything Riley has done for us so far has been great but and uh, you can you can agree over there or not Riley I think your magnum opus now was the first episode of Lund Employed 
And I don't know, it's it's always uncomfortable like sitting here praising people sitting right there. But Riley and Fish did an, an incredible job of this. Uh, it's something new that we tried. It's uh, basically like almost like a late night skit of 15 minute feature. But uh, it was incredible. Lund, you went and uh, had your first endeavor trying to find a new job, a new career. Um, and Mike Pasman, who was our, I guess, our first guest on a new run of the podcast. We kind of joked about you going in and auditioning. You auditioned for a new job? Well, he did. This was, okay, a, like, it was an audition. Right, you go in an interview, but he actually went and did it and tried. Now, from a standpoint of us filming and the entertainment value, you were incredible. <laughs> And yes. I'm sure all of us are very proud of you and happy that you are our friend. From a mechanic <laughs> standpoint, I would give you like a five and a half out of ten. Oh, that's a pass. Yeah. That's pretty good. I actually. can't believe you didn't get the job. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? I was I was a little shocked too. I don't, yeah, spoiler, I didn't get the job. Yeah. <laughs> spoiler alert! Stay tuned for episode two. <laughs> you turned them down. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said I was. I want to explore other opportunities, but uh, it was it was fun. We were in there for two three hours, and they were really really accommodating, and they came up with some of their, their own ideas. We had our own ideas. That was the first one we were able to shoot. We've since shot the, the next episode. So, that one's going to be coming out in a few weeks, I believe. And if I don't get that job, then I'll have to, we'll have to keep filming. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it's uh, it, it's it's something really fun for, for me to do. Um, I hope Riley and Fish are having fun uh, uh, recording it and, and doing some of the editing. But uh, the feedback has been amazing so far. Uh, like most people understand it's, 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 it's all for entertainment purposes, but it also does help highlight the business. Mm. So, it is a really good, I guess, marketing tool for that business if you want to kind of show the lighter side of your, your business or your, or what you guys do behind the scenes. So, if you're interested, please reach out to us. I, I'm willing to try just about anything uh, once. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who knows, maybe I will find my, my dream job from doing this. I'm, I'm not going to say no right off the bat. I'm I'm open for business. Yeah. What well, had to feel good like working with your hands? You did, uh, Dustin very bravely brought in his truck for an oil change. I guess getting a free oil change. Yeah, how brave of you, Dustin. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you again to Mike for that. But uh, changing your own oil is something that a lot of people can do, but it's not easy easy to do. That must have been something nice as someone who was what, uh, I don't know, working at a desk for however many years. Uh, yeah. And that's that's the first time uh, since high school. What, what was the court? Like high school shop. musical. High school. <laughs> High school oh, shop, shop, high school yeah. mechanics, mechanics yeah. Mm. that I that I have changed. I've never changed my own oil in my life. I just mm. take it in like ninety eight percent of the population and pay someone to do it, which you did there too. Anyway, yeah, you didn't even change yeah. your own oil. <laughs> yeah, I did, and they did a fantastic yeah. job. So it was a, a, a twofer for me that day. I got my oil changed, and I was able to change somebody else's oil. But yeah, no, that's that's what it's all about. Just new experiences and kind of seeing what what other people do and how how they make their living. So something exciting. Uh, hopefully, it's entertaining and. Um, hopefully, we continue to have fun doing it. Well, we will. I don't know about <laughs> you. I will tell you, my, I've never had my kidneys hurt from laughing. <laughs> before but and I have to answer this because I've already had about a dozen people ask. Lund employed is unscripted. Yeah. Which which gives you even more credit if people think that you can't come up with your jokes on the spot like that. He can. <laughs> yeah. I he can. doesn't know the difference between whipped cream and whipping cream, but he can he can come <laughs> yeah. up with a good comeback. Yeah, do you guys think or, we scripted that one? <laughs> <laughs> or Cadillac or Cadillac. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm I'm just not afraid to be wrong. Yeah. Let, let's put yeah. it like it's that. Just, <laughs> yeah. I was wrong quite a bit in that mechanic shop. Yeah. <laughs> quite but anyways, a bit. yeah. It's a lot of fun and we've really enjoyed partnering with the chamber on both the business spot light and lund employed uh, if you're interested especially if you are a chamber member or want to become a chamber member reach out to us and uh, we can see if one of those is a fit because it is it is a lot of fun for everyone involved and uh, yeah both those available now uh, on our youtube pages so if you haven't gone and watched it yet my goodness uh, go watch and thank you again to alberta asian motorworks and mike pasman especially for doing that because yeah it was it was everything we could have hoped for mm -hmm. for a first go yeah and swipe up to subscribe i don't know if that's how you subscribe on YouTube, but subscribe. Yeah. Kevin, how are those fake accounts that we told you to make like three <laughs> years ago? Uh, you wanted a thousand, right? Yeah. yeah. 500 is good. 500? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'm, you need I've got one and it's my <laughs> own. You probably haven't subscribed there either. But, uh, and then, yeah, we'll tease it a bit. Uh, we already did record the next Lund Employed. We won't say anything about it, but you went to MNP mm -hmm. with Walsh uh, kind of as your potential future boss. And uh, spoiler alert, stay tuned for episode three. Yeah, I don't know if tax season is the best time <laughs> to go, but... <laughs> 
yeah. but uh yeah that one that one is all i learned a lot of that yeah. one as well too i can't wait to debrief with walsh too when he gets back um okay moving on in uh, shooting the breeze just a quick thing we want to mention again uh, because it's a uh, bose is a big driving force behind this a new event coming up it's springtime much to our dismay especially aaron and i because kevin's a bully but uh, lots of runs happening and uh the bauer community sun run again uh, which is uh put on by bose bar and stage is coming up saturday may 11th it's a 3k or a 5k walk or run um i think we're all running in it light jogging in it i don't know maybe not lund but the three of us are and uh, it's all going towards the bauer community center there so it's a great cause uh you got the the walk and the run and then afterwards bose has a beer gardens going live entertainment and that and that's always the if you do any of these like organized runs is just eating junk food and having a beer after i think that is actually one of the reasons to do it i mean speak for yourself but yeah <laughs> <laughs> that is a great part of it but kevin's I doing it because he's out of shape too. yeah yeah i he do it because i'm out of yeah. shape yeah no kevin like kev what is your goal 5k time and you're gonna cripple the self-esteem of us and so many listeners but i mean for this fun run i'm i'm not going to take it too seriously. I'm probably just going to run with you guys. Uh, so you're going to so walk beside minutes. us. Yeah. <laughs> 45 minutes for a 5K? But Great. If, if this was a full-on serious 5K, I'd, I'd try to do it in 20 minutes. Yuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's over faster. <laughs> Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I do. Whenever I'm running, I, I'm like, I wish I could run faster because this wouldn't take as long. Yeah. I wish I was a little bit taller. I wish I was a baller. I wish I, you that's know, the you most know, could run <laughs> long. Wow. You know the rest. Oh, yeah. You're practicing your rap. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do you know the Lady Marmalade rap yet? Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? C'est soi. Well, that's the chorus, but yeah. You... That's all I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's coming up. I think uh, most of us will be there for that as well. So hopefully you can join us. So you can go to bowercommunity.ca slash sunrun to uh, sign up for that. Um, I have the, the Uber thing here to talk about. We already did that. So I think last thing to shoot the breeze about because uh, again, Aaron, you, you're, you're going to be left out of this a little bit, but you'll enjoy the stories. We had our annual uh, Chubbs Winter Classic at uh, the Indoor Sim Golf Tournament. And I think we have to talk about it because Lund, Kevin, and I were all on the same team. And I just, I want to, this, I want to call out Ryan Lund for being a bad influence because it was $5 shots that night. The only thing, there was five of us. The only thing we ordered was shots for the team and our bill was $250. Yeah, 10 shots a piece. <laughs> which is like how many beers before and shots too. Like it was it was, it was, was a rough night, I think, for all of us and an even rougher day the next day because that was the worst hangover of my life. And I just want to publicly apologize if you're listening <laughs> to the parents of the little boy in the stall next to me at the bowling alley who, even though I was trying to hold it in until he was gone. He heard me very violently being hung over and then I just hear a little voice next to me. Oh, are you okay, mister? <laughs> <laughs> and I, there's a number of times in my life I thought I hit rock bottom. That was it. And then I had to go home before bowling was done. That was my favorite. You couldn't even finish bowling. Oh. You probably traumatized that little kid for life. That was well, probably his first time in the bathroom by himself. He was watching YouTube on full blast too. So yeah, probably like, to drown out your yeah. puking sounds. Oh. <laughs> I just, oh, I didn't even say anything either. So he, I probably should have like at least given him a <laughs> just, just like, ghosted him from I'm the like, other man, stall. I just don't even want to engage yeah. because it could go down so many roads. Yeah, but, maybe uh, he won't notice you. Yeah. He's <laughs> telling his friends at school you're dead. Yeah. Yeah. That was, I will say that was the worst hangover I think I've ever had. And it's <laughs> almost all because of Ryan Lund. Hey, you didn't have to drink him. I mean, you would have been a bad teammate yeah, if you didn't. I was but... just being a good teammate. That's because all the birdies we got, man. I yeah. mean, that and, <laughs> and the bogey. I mean, like if I didn't push you to be better, mm. we probably would have finished the exact same. We didn't. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, we didn't get any better. Yeah. Let's get tequila after a bogey so we don't do it again. And did we get another bogey? I don't I remember. Rest my case. <laughs> And big yeah. big shout out to the Kubi guy. It's been a it's been oh a, yeah, it's been a while oh. since I've seen him. Oh yeah, thanks for that Kubi. Yeah, I, did, well, you just I definitely did it. not yeah. remember that <laughs> until <laughs> I was reminded of it. Oh the next yeah, day. I, me too. When I saw it on the front lawn. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. oh, what a night! Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to shoot the breeze about that because uh, drinking is bad. Well, no, it's not. That's a bad <laughs> bad time to to lead into the next thing I'm going to talk about. Yeah, Aaron, this is your intervention. 
<laughs> I will say, we to shoot the breeze, I have been drinking this lovely Moscato from Costco. It's Kirkland brand and enjoying it. And uh, in my evenings after the baby goes to sleep. And then we were at Ted's for a friend's Easter dinner. You weren't there, uh, Lund. Because you're not the, our yeah, friend. It, it, was your house. it was your house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Ted had this lovely red wine and I had a glass. And I thought, oh, that's very good. And then Ted graciously let me take it home and I had another glass when I got home. And I was like, holy shit, I'm drunk. Yeah. And I was like, but I've been drinking all this Moscato. And I looked, 5%. 5% Moscato from mm. Kirkland. That's it? That's some bullshit. So they get you. just drank like a wine ball I was. It was a beer. juice. Yeah. It was like I was drinking juice. But the red so wine, 13.5%. Okay. So you thought you built up a tolerance. Yeah, You're like, I'm just going to have this whole yes. bottle and I'll be fine. So I don't need an intervention. I actually need higher proof alcohol. There we go. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Thank well, you. Well, I can help with it's that. It's important to set goals. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's a, so there's, there's a life lesson too. Look at the percentage. Yes. Yeah, Costco you up your up your damn percentage. Yeah. yeah, we'll we'll send you a bill for those free ads. There's no <laughs> for that mom and pop shop. Yeah, I've never heard of them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we go for a hot dog, anyways. <laughs> Now I'm going to tell you that you should drink because uh, we want to give a shout out again to our friends at Red Heart Brewing where uh, last time maybe it felt like it might have been just a fling, a one and done. They gave us some beer to drink during our uh, episode, which was great. But now not only are they giving us beer to drink every episode, and this is something I think they do, I don't know how often, but that you can do with your company or whatever and do a custom label. But we are going to have Oh Dear branded beer uh, from Red Heart to drink every episode, which I think is uh, pretty neat. What's it going to be called, Tut? Oh Beer. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So clever. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And it's it's okay that it's the same name as a segment we used to do because I don't think anyone watched that. So, um, it's fine. Maybe we'll fire that back up no, too. Maybe. It just would review the same beer every yeah. time. <laughs> it's, yeah. Just give it different rankings based on our mood. Ooh. Oh. Yeah. I'd watch. And uh, another thing too coming up at uh, Red Heart that uh, this hits pretty close to home and uh, Jared told when I asked him, hey, anything we can mention? He told me this and I am very excited. Um, they're doing a, a show. Again, if you've been to a, um, a concert at Red Heart, it's it's, like, it's a small space, so it's a really fun, intimate kind of concert. Uh, Daniel Wesley is coming May 11th, who uh, probably don't even know who that is. He's a Canadian like indie artist, basically. And back when I was, uh, I'm going to go down memory lane here. When I was a student at SAIT, one of my classmates turned me on to his music. And then um, not that long later, he was coming to play the campus bar. And I was writing for the SAIT newspaper at the time, like the entertainment section and stuff. So the first interview I ever did as a, in my radio career, quote unquote, was with Daniel Wesley. Hmm. So uh, I'll definitely be there for that. And you can get your tickets uh, from Eventbrite. I just Google Daniel Wesley at Red Heart. And uh, I think they can only fit about 100 people in there. So get your tickets. It's uh, I highly recommend going if you just like good live music. Is that something they do regularly? Have live music in there? Or is I this think kind so. of a one-off? Well, I know like Jared and, and some of the other guys at Red Heart also play music and have, have done that. If you follow them on Instagram, they, they play music sometimes. So Daniel Wesley, just really good chill music. If there's uh, a, it's something other than alcohol that you like to partake in uh, and you do that before you show up too, you'll enjoy the music even more. Mm. He sings a, he sings a lot about partaking in drugs. Cannabis. Yeah. Well, not mm. drugs. Ted's talking cannabis. about drugs. <laughs> Don't drink, do drugs. Yeah. Ted Emmett. <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll, I'll let that, I'll sit with that quote. And well, speaking of uh, live music, I guess we have some coming from above us right now as there is a, a band practicing. I have no idea if, if the mic's picking this up or not, but uh, whatever, just is what it is uh, as we move in to Deer Call. That was pretty nice. That was like a deer whisper. Oh, you don't want to scare them away. Yeah. <laughs> that <was> like, <laughs> That's what I've learned. Oh, yeah, yeah. My past deer calls have been too aggressive. I want to woo them in. Mm. That was so quiet, though. Like You would have had to have already wooed them in, and now you're just like trying to seal that's the deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is going on in those woods? That's when, they're, that's when they're nice and close, and you want them just a little bit closer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just about at the finish line. But you yeah, just, you just need that there. little bit more to get them over the edge. Yeah. Well, you're not allowed in the woods ever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not allowed in a lot of places. <laughs> um, yeah, anyways, let's go in to deer call. Oh, no. Yeah. Let's actually... <laughs> I forgot where I... That threw me off a lot. Aaron, read stuff. Deer call. <coughs> Ew. 
I know. I, I, right. That's not how you do a deer call. <laughs> no, no, no. They're running away. Yeah. You're not sealing the deal I'm with any of them. Wits. What did you catch from that deer? Deer call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause with two dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making noise. <laughs> what, did, what did you do? I was just rubbing my eyes. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, it's contagious. Yeah, I, it's... I poked myself oh. in the eye when I was making fun of Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> you deserved it. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> don't look at me. This is the longest ad read Sorry. ever. I got the giggle sound. Okay, the blooper gym. reel is the only thing people even care about. That's true. Fun. All right. Mm-hmm. We'll just double over her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Deer call is brought this? to you by Aaron speaking. <laughs> yeah, I'm so pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I think we fucking nailed that one. Yeah. 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 You get pink eye from your own. We made her cry. Only again. if you've like t- touched. <laughs> okay. Some pe- oh. Yeah. If you've touched Touch some fecal your matter. Bowl. Yeah. Like without do, washing. Your does nose. it matter whose? I think anyone's oh, really. really. <laughs> okay. Can you do this? We're yes. running out of tape. Okay. Whew. Deer Call is brought to you by Cilantro and Chive, home of the Caesars that eat like a meal. Stop in at either location in Red Deer or Lacombe for the burger of the month and support a great cause. With $2 from every burger sold going back to the local guest chef's charity of choice. Cilantro and Chive, your new favorite destination to meet with family and friends for food, drink, conversation, and fun. It's just that simple. That was simple. That was, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what what I'm going to leave in and what I'm not going to leave in, but well, that was a journey. <laughs> And if anyone listening is an eye doctor, I'm, I may need to come see you. And uh, yeah, getting into the deer call finally. Um, thank you as always to everyone who answers our deer call when we put it out on a social media every month. We ask you a question, and if you answer, if you comment on Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is, uh, you're in the draw for one of two twenty-five dollar gift cards to Cilantro and Chive. Uh, this time, I didn't realize when I posted this that we've done it before, but I think with the theme of this episode, obviously being around the Spice Girls with the wannabe show coming. I just asked a very open question. Uh, We love talking about music. (laughs) I think Lund needs more of a music education. We learned after last show. So we just asked, what is the best 90s song or your all-time favorite 90s song? So a lot to choose from. Um, And Lund, Lund, I think as I list these out, I just want to see if you can name the band. I'm going to name the song, see if you can name the band. You don't win anything, but just a little redemption. Okay. From last time, and I think we learned guess Madonna if it all else mm-hmm. fails. Well, I know Madonna's gonna be one one answer at least. No, uh, well, we'll see. Uh, one of our winners of a twenty five dollar gift card was James, and he said, uh, "What I got? What does he have? <laughs> <laughs> pink eye." <laughs> <laughs> Now we got to keep the pink eye thing in. Um, yeah. No, any anyone? Kevin's got to know that. So one. it's uh, what I got. No, no, no. I got. I got yeah. nothing. I almost swore they were playing it right now upstairs, but no, they're not. It's what I got. I yeah, got, I got. I got. I got. <laughs> You're getting there. Oh, I, I know the song too. Um, oh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. No, oh, Sublime. Ah, oh, yeah. I knew that. You oh. know what? You got the song though. That was. That I was do, pretty good. I did know that song quite well, actually. Which, uh, yeah, that's one that is. Yeah. Very very 90s song i think and uh i don't know if, if, if it's even the best sublime song though hmm. um kayleen was our other winner no one's gonna get this for sure because i wouldn't even know it uh finally do you no, know the song no no idea by cc peniston i don't know who that I is finally no. it's happening. oh uh, yeah good song. okay yeah, yeah, yeah very yeah, 90s yeah. like yeah. the club like 90s club music was the uh, best music was it was she a one-hit wonder yeah 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 okay but it and it probably took her a while to break through yeah so she she was pleased i feel like all you need is one hey if you hit it big enough you can probably live off that one song oh well, it depends maybe not nowadays <laughs> yeah. ask mc hammer <laughs> where's he living these days on the streets yeah <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. But. Yeah, he's probably living under I his mean, big he, pants. Well, probably, he did go. He <laughs> yeah. did go bankrupt, did, but I, I mean, think he he's. Did, yeah. we, should, we should try and get him on the show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tasia or Tasha, I don't know. And Carol both said Wannabe by the Spice Girls, Classic. which, uh, and they didn't know the theme of this episode when they said that. It really is honestly up there. Like, if you had to pick a song that defined the 90s, mm-hmm. that's maybe top five. Yeah, uh, Spice Girls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is one uh, Laura said, I've never heard, heard of this even. And then I looked it up on YouTube and maybe we should play a little bit of it here. Uh, Laura said, now that we found love. Uh, Destiny's Child. 
Heavy D and the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like our gang in high school. Yeah. <laughs> heavy, do you want your D to be heavy though? Is that a selling uh, point? Oh, I, was, I thought oh, we were yeah, talking about did. Dustin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should start calling Heavy D. <laughs> oh, no, that's too mean. Heavy D, the, isn't that uh, what? What do they call that? Those guys that Dirty go Mike and the Dirty boys. Mike and the boys. That's, yeah. that's what a spaghetti party in the back of the car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So this song though is like they're like their sound heavy D and the boys. Even the name is just is so nineties. But yeah, I've never heard of this. So let's get a little snippet here. No clue. Never heard, nope. never heard this. But it's on my playlist now. <laughs> but a thank you to Laura for bringing that to our attention. You couldn't see, and I don't think I'm going to put it on social media, because if you have never met us before and you're wondering, are they white? If you just saw everyone dancing <laughs> to that song, you got your answer. Yeah. And you could see our skin color too. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that might be the giveaway. Too, yeah. yeah. Can't get anything past you. <laughs> Maggie said Gangster's Paradise by Coolio. Oh. Man, maybe like, oh, sorry. I, I, Would you have got I, it? Uh, I might have gotten that oh. one. Aaron, you can you wrap it all for us right now? I won't wrap, but I do love that yeah. song. That is, though, that was like a... Oh, what's, <clears throat> Dangerous Minds, the movie. Yeah. <gasps> but it was like a bit of a Michelle revolutionary Pfeiffer? song. It was a definitive song in the in the rap yeah, game, too, at yeah. that time. Uh, but uh, Was that his breakout song, or yeah. was he already kind of established? No, that was it was kind That's of a one-hit wonder. Because he had, what is it, Fantastic Voyage or whatever? Like, you'd know. know it. You'd know it yeah. to hear it. But that song is, yeah, one of the best for sure. And she also said... And I disagree only for this is actually a great song. You ought to know by Alanis. Yes. Oh, sorry, I keep I wouldn't have got, you wouldn't that. got it. No. By Alanis Morissette. The only reason is is on radio stations you have to play a certain amount of CanCon. Mm-hmm. So I hear you ought to know minimum three times a week. But uh which a great song. I just hear it a lot. Okay, I don't know these ones, Lund. I don't know. Uh Liesel said Groove is in the heart. Oh man. Um Madonna. Anyone? I can see your notes. Oh. So <laughs> That's very honest of you. Uh, D-Light. You have to know. I, know the, I, feel, like, yeah, I, know I feel like the, the 90s had a lot of one-hit wonders. Oh, yeah. Yes. yeah. A lot of D, too. Well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, heavy D and that's like, why D-Light. I, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Sunny D. <laughs> uh, Christina. Oh, the, the you'll, I have faith you're going to get this one. Said, kiss from a rose. Uh, yes, I've heard it. They're really ramping things up upstairs. It's great, actually. It's, uh, I would go listen. Yeah. Seal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do we know who they are, Riley? The no, band? No oh. Maybe they'll be our new favorite 2024 song. Yeah. Um, no, Kiss from a Rose. I don't, I'm not much for karaoke. Oh, and I'm not yeah. a good, that is a great karaoke yeah. song. But that's, that's and you can't you can't sing that song without just going like 112. Oh, yeah. when, the, when the baby oh, yeah. hits. Yeah. yeah. Do you know? Do you know any words to that one? But it da 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 da. Yeah. Da 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 da. Yeah. Baby. Baby. I have been kissed from a rose and it hurts. I don't know. I don't know. I give if it if it was playing, I could sing along with it. I could mumble could along with it. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Bailey said shoop. Oh, or, salt and pepper. Yeah. I don't know who Golden Trio on Instagram said Bittersweet Symphony, mm-hmm. which I think might be the best song oh, of the 90s. Is it uh and the oh, best one hit wonder? Ever. It's one hit Oh, it's one hit wonder? Yeah. Okay, it's not who I was singing of then. No, it's not who I was thinking of. I thought it was Coldplay. That, that's why oh. I, was, I thought it was Coldplay. You too. <laughs> Way before Coldplay. I know this. I know the song. Do you know Aaron, or did you already look at my notes? It's the Verve. Yeah. I already the looked. <laughs> but not to be confused yeah. with the Verve pipe, <laughs> who also have a very well. It's a dark song, but the Freshman also a great song. Not mentioned on here, but yeah, Bittersweet Symphony. With I don't know what it is. Even to this day, is like yeah, it's a, it's a great. Song. If I had to pick a song that defined the '90s again, like I said, Wannabe would be top five that might be number one to be honest yeah i'd, I'd be up in my top five i think yeah um okay Lynn, pam said ice ice baby vanilla ice yeah mm-hmm. baby have you ever thought of entering a vanilla ice lookalike contest uh, i guess the hat right now let's do it he, he wore those yeah. flat yeah flat i'm not rims. saying you look like it i was just trying to get to know you a bit more <laughs> um 
I don't have the dance moves that mm. Vanilla Ice had. I don't the- know. We saw your dance moves before and they were vanilla. <laughs> so very vanilla. <laughs> I, I respect it. He, like, he's a very entertaining guy. Good voice. He could flip a house for you, yeah. too. Is that what he does now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Aaron, Ashley, and McKenna all said Mr. Jones by... Uh, Mr. Jones? Uh, no, it's by Andre 3000. That's Miss Jackson. Oh! <laughs> Mr. Jones dated her for a while. Oh, okay. I don't, know. I don't think that's 90s either, but that's a good uh, song. Is, great it, song. is it by Tom Jones? No. Okay, I have no clue. If Tom Jones did what? a song, what would you do Mr. if you Jones? gave birds an abacus? What would you call them? Counting crows. <laughs> yeah, no, I would. There's no way I would have got that. Yeah. So what, I, great I'm. Song. I'm I'm great at giving clues yeah. for guessing games, though. I almost got that one confused with Dr. Jones. Oh. There's a lot of Joneses, hey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the 90s were just crawling yeah, with it's them. It's a popular name. Yeah, it still is. Dr. Jones, you actually, Kevin, that is, would be one of my favorite 90s songs. Dr. But, Jones, Dr. Jones. Call by who? Dr. Jones, Dr. Jones. You have to know um, who that is. It's like a really, really cool band. They got a lot of spunk. <laughs> they, oh, yeah. oh, no, they don't. <laughs> well, Spunk, yeah. Just, doesn't matter. just keep. I have no, I don't know. You don't know? No. It's Aqua. Oh, okay. I do know. I just yeah. didn't remember. Another quintessential 90s band. Uh, Lindsay said The Sign. I just played it for Kenzie it, the other oh. day. Is it Cheryl Crow? No. You're really stuck in the crows now. Yeah. <laughs> crows like to hang out on the sign. Ah, uh, The Sign. They were like the 90s ABBA, but not nearly as successful. No, I got nothing. Ace of Base. Ace of Base. Oh, no. Yeah. Not, not the mine. best. Yeah. These are all like, you can't go wrong with, no. with these songs. Uh, Nikki said Two Princes. This would be a tough one for you, Lund, no. I think. Kevin's too young. No. Uh, the Spin Doctors, which a couple, they were like a two-hit wonder, but again, just a very 90s band. Uh, Heather said, I mean, one of the probably biggest songs of all time. Even Lund will know this. Smells Like Teen Spirit. Ha. Huh. <laughs> smells like teen spirit like I, I know would know the song but no i don't know oh, exactly that. well nirvana i know that one so even kevin knows that and he's like 12 yeah but he he like he, mm. he's into that sort of thing yeah. <laughs> uh crystal said creep that wasn't answer i was just in her dms and she, <laughs> that's how she no creep by oh i've heard this song co- i've heard the song covered yeah. before everybody Lucas Rossi did a great yeah, cover. That's who, that's who I was yeah. thinking of it's covering. Very, yeah, it's very... Um, Such a creep. I don't belong here. You missed a few words, but yeah, you can't think Such of the band a, though. No. Kevin? No. I, I don't know how to d- define them as a band because they were like huge and not huge at the same time, but Radiohead. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, Erica? Oh, come on, Lund. Don't fail me here. I would do anything for love. But I won't do that. Bye. Oh, some prude. <laughs> <laughs> this was like your probably your high school nickname. Hmm. I don't think so. Yeah, heavy D. So Dustin was heavy D, and you would have been Meatloaf. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's what Kevin would yeah, be. I Uncle did, Meatloaf. I, I, actually put on did, a few, I actually yeah. did know that one. I don't know if I would have got there, but Oh, this next one's good. That's yeah. Reading ahead. Um <laughs> Dallas did a more Canadian flavor, and again, another one of like uh, probably the one of the best Canadian songs of all time. Drinking in LA. No idea. No idea. Think of like a futuristic vehicle that helps you poop. Brand Van 3000. <laughs> okay, next to podcast, the, the game is Ted giving obscure clues for band names. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you know drinking in LA. Yeah, I, I, yes. I I know mm. 95% of these songs. Songs, yeah. And that's why we're, we're getting closer, right? Because we had album names, which was super hard. This wasn't even the game either. It was just, I was just trying to make things interesting, but uh, which we have to work really hard to do on this podcast. But uh, yeah, thank you to everyone who answered. I guess now I can open it up. Uh, Dr. Jo- Kevin said Dr. Jones was mm-hmm. uh, the big one for me. It's tough. I think I Want It That Way was 1999. Mm-hmm. So it still counts. So obviously I have to say that because it's uh, very close to my heart <laughs> will permanently. Your heart, will your heart go on? Oh, yeah. That's uh, a good one. Celine too. Dion. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's not my cup of tea, but a lot of people dug that song. Might be you're a little older now. You feel more feelings. Yeah, it might be your cup of I tea. I mean, Titanic was such a big movie too. Uh, no Chumba Wumba. No. I thought that, that would have been listed. Wonderwall? Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. yeah. So that's a big one. Fun, I was wondering if someone was going to bring that up because as I was coming in today, that's what was playing over in the Ross Street there patio. It was Wonderwall. And yeah. I, hey, there's one to talk about. Iris, thought, anything by the Goo yeah. Goo Dolls. Yeah. Yeah. Goo. Oh, see. Yeah. Hansen. We could go down. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, was the real Slim Shady a 90s song or is that 2000s? Oof. 
It might, might be been, right on the yeah, cusp. Yeah. I'd, cause I, was, I know my name is was the 90s, like his first okay. first yeah. song. Another one hit wonder, probably because one of my favorite movies is Night at the Roxbury. Mm. <laughs> what is love? I was, yeah. Yeah. Wow. I was, I was looking yeah. at a list too of the, like the best songs of the 90s. Is now, that is that 90s or is that 80s? I think it was it's like 90s? 94. If it was yeah. 90s, it's 90s like with that. 80s well, flair to it. I yeah. know that movies in the 90s, but I see, and we could we could go on forever with 90s songs because I know for me that's my favorite era. Always will be. Mm-hmm. Like any spice, like any of the Spice Girls hits are in there. Yeah, uh, any of the bo- yeah Pony. Ooh. Yeah, the genuine thong song Cisco. Oh, Cisco. Oh. Yeah. What about Slam Dunk the Funk by Five? No. Uh, you've lost me here. Oh, any line he says, uh, "I'm the bad boy that you invite for dinner." Don't have got no manners because I eat with my fingers. That's po. <laughs> Poetry. Wow. <laughs> Let's get him on the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All five of them. <laughs> and like Slam Dunk the Funk. That's unbelievable. Yeah, they didn't have way cooler names yeah. back there. Yeah. 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 Well, I think that's a good, good enough trip down memory lane. We can always go on forever with the nostalgia. But thank you to everyone who answered. Again, congratulations to our gift card winners, James and Kayleen. And yeah, stay tuned to our uh, social media pages for your next chance to win. Okay, so with that, Aaron, we we did something a, a little different. We had you very last minute plan a game for us. Kevin, thanks for coming up with it. You can always rely on everyone else to help me uh, do my job for us. But we wanted to stick with the theme of it being kind of a Spice Girls episode because we're very excited. But we didn't want to do the music too much. So what are, what are we doing instead? Okay, this is real experimental. I feel like we could really get, I could really get called to task for some of my pronunciations here tonight. But... We're going to go with it, and it's called Spice or Science. And I have 10 different... Spice. Spices or... Science. I'm up two points. (laughs) (laughs) 10 different... Spices or that are super obscure ones I've never heard of, but Google tells me are real, mm-hmm. or um, they're basically active ingredients for uh, agriculture chemical inputs. But they were the first thing that came to mind is like weird words that could compete with these crazy spice names. So I'm going to give you a possibly very badly pronounced word, and you just have to guess if it's spice. Or if it's science. Okay. That sounds simple simple enough. Okay. So, we we did decide what's on the line for this one. Well, Aaron, you can say it because I know you're very excited. The loser of this game has to buy the other three people at this table a light-up scrunchie and a drink on the Spice Girls night. Wannabe night. Sounds good. Okay. Spice or Science is brought to you by Recovery Lab, home of Central Alberta's only cryo spa. Recovery Lab is dedicated to your health, wellness, and recovery, offering a wide variety of services, including physiotherapy and fascial stretch therapy. Head to myrecoverylab.ca to book your appointment today. Anyone else miss going to the, the cryo spa? All no. the time? I was just going to say, if you miss some spice in your life, that cold <laughs> tub, yeah, it'll uh, <laughs> yeah. get you going. You think it works to get rid of pink eye? <laughs> No, honestly, honestly, honestly you probably. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. how you spread pink eye. Okay, yeah, I'll stay out of there. Yeah. Keep my face out of there. I don't <laughs> think anything can live in that water. <laughs> it is pretty cold. Again, so, apologies in advance for all the poor pronunciation. So, if you are a uh, farmer or you are a spice expert, I'm sorry. I'm pleased to see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. First up, asafoetida. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Asafoetida? Yeah. <laughs> okay, can you pass the asafoetida? <laughs> yeah. So it's either I'm like... going to be showing that at the Spice Girls <laughs> night. Sounds like you describe someone like she's got the ass of a tita. <laughs> I don't know what a tita is, but all right. Science. science. <laughs> <laughs> Do you say spience? <laughs> yeah, I did. You hedged your bet. Yeah. It's a spice. Yes. Ah. yes. It's huge. The ass part it's, got me. Um, <laughs> it always does. It's part of the carrot family. It's produced in Iran, oh. Afghanistan, Central oh. Asia, n- Northern India. It's a. It's primarily used in Indian oh. uh, food. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I knew that. All right, dicamba. Science. science. It is science. I actually knew that. Yeah, one. The, it's a the group dye for thing. herbicide. Yeah. It's an active yeah. ingredient. I used to when I worked in an AM radio station, and there's a lot of ag ads. I mm-hmm. heard that word all there the time. There you go. Yeah. That was that was your easy one. Oh okay. boy. Episode. Can you use it in a sentence? I have some episode. At least that's how I'm reading it to be pronounced. Like this is episode, episode four. four of Oh Dear. <laughs> yeah, close. Yeah. Spice. spice. It's a spice. Oh, Commonly yes. used in Mexican cuisine. It's often used to flavor yeah. beans and other dishes. Mm-hmm. Ah, I love Mexican. Three, two, one. We, yeah. In Dazaflam. 
Whatever it is, it sounds fun. Oh. I'm just saying these with confidence, but mm -hmm. I'm very inconfident about them. And this one sounds like, like a hair growth drug. Mm. Yeah. You sound like you should work for Big Pharma. <laughs> what are the side effects? I got nothing. Okay. Honestly, it's probably hair loss. Which is a sore spot. Don't bring it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've been For the love of God. <laughs> been having too much endazoplam in my diet. Yeah, you got to uh, cool it with endazoplam. <laughs> All right. Science. 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 It's a group 29. Four, two, two. Yeah. I meant to say spice and I panicked and it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to go do the opposite of what I want to say now. Endazoplam. Is that like, that's almost like I thought a magician that was, could I thought say that was, when he throws the smoke bomb and yeah. does a flam. I thought it was too science-y to be <laughs> Yeah, it, did, it did sound, yeah. I thought she was trying to trick us without. All right. Attractolotus rhizoma. That's one word? Two words, one thing. Oh my goodness. Attractolotus rhizoma. That sounds like a love potion. Oh, I was thinking like a skin condition. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Why not both? What is it? Attractolotus rhizoma. That sounds like a like a thing that you do. Attract a lotus. <laughs> Rhizoma. Okay. Spice. Science. It is a spice. Ugh. It's an herb that's been used in Chinese herbal medicine for centuries. Bitter and pungent in flavor, yet warm in nature. Four, three, two. Anardana. Summer Donna? <laughs> <laughs> Madonna. It's Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are people just like screaming in their cars right now being like yeah. that she's fucking yeah. butchering all of this. Sorry, side note, no one said Blue is the best song in the 90s. Ah, <laughs> ah, that's just common knowledge yeah. though. Everyone knows. Yeah, it's true. What was it again? I forgot the word. Anardana. Anardana. Alakazam. <laughs> Spice. It is a spice. It's a uh, dried pomegranate seeds. Oh, oh interesting. Oh. What is the the country of origin? Sorry, I oh. did not go quite that deep. Wherever they have pomegranates, I've, I've made that apology so many times. <laughs> it's gotta be tropical. Yeah. <laughs> you missed my sex joke. <laughs> what? She uh, doesn't. Matter. Go ahead and explain it. And people, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's why. Aaron you know. said sorry. I didn't go that deep. I said uh, I make that apology all okay. the time. It was good. The yeah, listeners yeah. caught it. Yeah. Good. So that was just five, four, three. I also, for a lot of these, like would like listen to how they're pronounced, but it was usually just like a robot voice telling mm. me. So, so like Andrew doing an ad read. Yeah. <laughs> a mazapir. Oh, I know what a mazapan is. <laughs> Why do I know what a mazapan is? Oh, it's like yeah, okay, that's like a drug. So is a drug like dental dentist use is it. a drug a science or a spice? Depends on the drug. Oh. And is a drug a science? <laughs> Did yeah. you have Ooh. a drug? That is how I'm going to refer to doing drugs yeah. from now I'm on. I'm going to do a science. <laughs> I had a science tonight. <laughs> yeah, that does sound doing? better. A science. <laughs> science. It is science. Yeah. It's a group yeah, we two. We talked ourselves in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I want some science so bad yeah. right now. Six, five, four. With three, three, left. three left. You've only got one wrong. Yeah. Oh. Lactofen. Hey, why couldn't the shark swim so fin. good? Because <laughs> he lacked a fin. Oh, I thought it was because he had diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why he took well, some it's, lactifin. Well, it's laxative. Oh. All right. <laughs> science. It's a science. Oh, oh, I touched myself over it. It's a group 14. Six for Lund, five for me, five for the athlete. Oh, I thought you had six. No. Okay. Six, five, five. Good. With two left. If you get this and we get it wrong, you win. Yeah. I like those odds. Galangal. There's no can way that's not a sex can you, thing. Can you <laughs> spell that word? G-A-L-A-N-G-A-L. Isn't that your... Oh, no, that's your uvula. <laughs> Not even close. You were thinking of dangle. Yeah, well, and then you, but it, it could be called a galangle. That dangly thing in the back of your throat. A, yeah, if, it was Cardi a, B. if it was called a galangle, it would work. It would make sense. That's neither science nor... Is this galangle. a trick? <laughs> it's not a trick. Spice. spice. It is a spice. It's similar to ginger. Oh. It's a relatively common oh. ingredient in Indonesian and Malaysian recipes. Should we should we tell the Barbara for, from Wannabe that she should be galangle spice <laughs> just to mix things up? <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah. Somebody send her a DM right now. Man, we, we could form our... You, I know you wanted to be the Spice Boys. Yeah. We could be gal, galangle spice and what was the other one? Lactofin? No, no, that's no, that was a science. Well, yeah, well, uh, we'll re yeah. review the tape yeah. and then... Dibs can... galangle. Okay. <laughs> Okay, fair enough. All right. You look like a glangle. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, this is for the win if I get it. Seven, six, six. All right. Charnushka. 
Gazuntite. <laughs> Charnushka. Yeah. Charnushka. I... Sounds like a Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it does, yeah, it does. Oh, we should have done Spice or Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We could do that, that another time. One. I'm just picturing all these Russian dolls. <laughs> like, you know, those Russian dolls where there's a big yeah. one and there's a smaller. Mm. And then. Are and you then... thinking of the word babushka? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Charnushka. Okay. Okay, I think I'm. I think <laughs> or, I'm ready. All right. Or that Street Fighter, right? Charnushka. <laughs> oh, that's well, that's that's yeah. magic. Yeah. <laughs> spice. It is a spice. Yeah! It's also known as black caraway, black onion seed. It's got a subtle flavor that falls somewhere between cumin and thyme. Huh. Oh. So thing is, is Strybosch and I are tied, and we said the loser. Yeah. Do you, can you pull one? I got some tiebreakers. Okay. So Lund, you're, you're going to be good. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll play along for fun, but mine doesn't matter. Die, Ron. <laughs> Die, Ron. What did Ron do to you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's just say... He should die. Isn't that a song? That was Earl. Earl. Oh, Good, oh, goodbye, oh, Earl. Yeah. The other yeah, Earl had to die. <laughs> yeah. And no one said Earl Cowboy had probably, to die. He probably had a body. Yeah. Had a buddy, Ron, though. I'm uh, guessing. Yeah. Yeah. And Earl. Ron. Earl is definitely friends with a rock. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Me? Yeah. And they're both no longer with us. All right. Sounds like they deserved it. Die, Ron, for all the marbles. <sighs> no, for all the light up scrunchies. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Science. science. It is. It's yeah. group seven. It said. It said die. Die word is such a sciencey term. Mm. Okay. Bentazon. Science. science. God, it's group six. Okay. Group what? Six. Hey, tiebreaker number three. Astatine. <laughs> Don't Google that at home. Astatine. Spice. Spice. It is actually the rarest element on Earth. Oh, Only wow. approximately 25. This is from the periodic table. Mm-hmm. Only 25 grams occur naturally on the planet at any given time. <sighs> really? I don't know why yeah. I would have thought that's not science. All right. I got uh, one more. Okay. Tiebreaker four. Curium. Science. science. God damn it. <laughs> it is a synthetic chemical element. All right. You guys have cracked the code yeah. for science or spice. All right. For all the marbles, this is person closest to without going over. Price is right rules. Ooh, wow. Okay. okay. How many elements are in the periodic table? 136. 131. <laughs> 118. Yeah. No! <laughs> <laughs> so, Ted, what was your guess? 36. Oh. I knew he would go. I was banking on him going oh, yeah, over because yeah, I had yeah, no idea. Sure. You're fairly close, Kev. That's... I was pretty confident in my answer. Yeah. But... You, you might. I would have had no I clue. actually like legit was thinking like in my head and I'm like, it's got to be 32 or something like that. Or maybe it's a little more. There's I that knew many... it was in the hundreds. We used to have but... to like memorize oh, that. Yeah. Like, oh, my God. That's so dumb. All right. Well, hey, being dumb got me the win there. Well, actually, you got <laughs> you got everyone. second last. I got the win, <laughs> okay. baby. Okay, but I didn't lose. I'm getting a scrunchie and beard just like you. Oh yeah, shoot. But congratulations, yeah. Okay, well, that actually for again turned out pretty good. We learned some stuff, made some inappropriate puns that probably got cut. But uh, hey, well, otherwise, uh, you know what, yeah, congratulations on your win. Thanks. Hey, so that's like the second time I've won in one of these <laughs> stupid games, and I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Two beers now from Kevin at the at the wannabe show. So uh, hey, that uh, just about does it for this episode. So as we wrap things up, uh, the last thing to do always is just uh, get everyone's final thoughts, and we'll go to uh, the rookie at the table who did a great job, Uncle Meat. Thank you. I, is that it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just leave it there. Thank you. Goodbye. It was nice being up at the table. I felt like I was actually, you know, part of it. Whereas before I just sat on the couch beside Andrew was just texting the whole time. So it was good. We had a nice little quaint crew tonight, but you know, we're keeping this podcast afloat and yeah. It feels good. I am just really sorry to anybody who's mad about pronunciations in spice or science. I am neither a chef nor a scientist. That we we already knew that. Yeah, you think it was obvious. Yeah. And I am just psyched for the warmer weather. By the pleased time to see it warm up. I'm very pleased <laughs> tonight to see all the snow melt away. By the time this uh, airs, all the snow should be gone. So. Or there'll be more. I just better. don't know. Oh, winter God. number six. <laughs> yeah. By the time you edit this thing, it could be winter again. Yeah. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no. Uh, spring's here. Summer's around the corner and uh, lots of things on the horizon for, for our group and uh, and for the city. So, 
really pleased to see what's uh, what's to come. <laughs> Very well said. Thank you. Uh, with that, episode 37 of Oh Dear comes to a close. I actually, I haven't done this in a long, long time, uh, but here's your reminder to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Uh, yeah, we're, we're on TikTok. Don't want to talk about it, but we're there. And uh, make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, you don't swipe up. You just click the subscribe button, but uh, make sure you do that as well. Uh, more subscribers is our latest conquest. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts and feel so inclined, also been a while since uh, we got a review. Always nice to know how we're doing, uh, whether it's good or bad. Thank you once again, Barbara and Kat from Wannabe, a Spice Girls tribute for an excellent interview. And uh, thanks in advance to them as well for what we know will be a very excellent show on April 25th at Bose. And on that note, thank you as always to Bose Bar and Stage, our presenting sponsor, and to Communal Creative Studios for having us once again. And last but not least, thank you to you for once again tuning in to the Oh Dear podcast. For Ryan Lunn, co-worker Aaron, and the athlete Kevin Strybosch, I'm Ted Emmett, and we'll see you next time. Finn. <laughs> <laughs>